Fox Sports. We are Black Fox. We are Minnesota. Another warm summer afternoon in downtown Minneapolis where a loyal legion of fans continue to make their way into Target Field to watch the Twins take on the San Diego Padres. Guardy's guys will go after their 10th consecutive win over the Friars today. Currently, the Twins own the second longest win streak in the history of interleague play. Nine straight wins of the Padres dating back to 2005. Welcome Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North. The Minnesota Twins have been baseball's hottest hitting team so far, and it's early in the month of August. And a large part of the reason for that, Tim Lauder, is Brian Dozier. Six game hitting streak. He's hit 478 in his last six games. Yeah, and I like to call it vintage Brian Dozier. He's continued to do all season long and what he's done as of late. And that is swing the bat. He's a pull hitter. He likes to pull the ball. He's hit a couple of uh, doubles last night. So for Brian Dozier, you know what? What's his next level? Well, maybe his next level is to try and figure out a way to maybe lead this ball club. That could be the next level for Brian Dozier because he is doing everything offensively and defensively that a leader of a ball club should be asked to do. Dozier continues to deliver for the Twins now. 78 runs scored, second most in Major League Baseball. Up next, Dick and Roy review Kenny Vargas' first taste of target field last night. In short, the kid had a blast. Sports North is presented by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. And by Jeep. Hurry in and get a great deal during the Jeep Summer Clearance event. Not been a long homestand to be sure. It comes to a close this afternoon. The Twins hoping to complete a two-game sweep over the Padres. 
Odrisimer de Spagna will make a start for the Padres against Kevin Correa as we get underway here at Target Field. And I'm one Odrisimer de Spagna ahead of you at this point. So <laughs> Dick Bramer and Roy Smalley for the final game of this very brief two game road trip. The tw or homestand rather. The uh, Twins are uh, hoping to complete a two game sweep and hoping that they'll continue to get production in the month of August from a couple of the newest Twins. How much fun is it to see a couple of uh, uh, young guys uh, come up and ignite the uh, Twins offense and then get a, uh, a new player uh, Jordan Schaefer who wasted no time getting in the left field in the starting lineup got a base hit his first pitch he saw turned on the Jets and stole uh, second base had a very very nice little sacrifice bunt and made a nice play out in the left field a little shoestring and catch nice nice uh, debut for uh, Jordan Schaefer uh, with the uh, Twins last night. And then, of course, the talk of the town uh, now is Kenny Vargas, who has jumped into this Twins lineup and uh, provided an awful lot of production, some extra base pop in his first home run last night. Yeah, and we started to talk about uh, Schaefer, Danny Santana, and the newest uh, member uh, of the uh, Twins farm system, Kenny Vargas, who has shown remarkable poise and swing control. He's hit the ball hard uh, at least two times a game he's been in there. And then last night, the poise to sit on a breaking ball, get the breaking ball, and hammer it in the right field seats to give the Twins a victory. What a boost offensively from this young man for the Twins. A couple of months ago, the Twins went out to San Diego and completed a two-game sweep. They hope to do the same thing here to the Padres in their home ballpark in just a few moments. And the Twins heading out on the road after the game. Four games in Oakland, three games in Houston, then a much longer homestand. And the team has played better baseball, scored a lot more runs in the month of August. And as we said in Chicago, what the Twins want to do is put together a couple of winning months in August and September. So far, three and one in the month of August. Bud Black hoping that his team can continue to play pretty good uh, baseball, although he still has yet to beat the Minnesota Twins. Black and Ron Gardenhire were Winter League teammates a long time ago in Venezuela. Good friends to this day. The Menards batting order for the Padres. Everett Cabrera and Hervis Solarte, Seth Smith, Tommy Medica, Jed Jerko, Will Venable, Yonder Alonso, Yasmani Grandal, and Jeff Francoeur. Kevin Crea on the mound for the Twins. He's had kind of an up and down season, but the one thing that uh, manager Ron Gardenhire 
really, really likes to respect. He battles, he competes, he can uh, lose his stuff every once in a while, but he, most of the time, Gardy feels like he gives his team a chance to win. He kind of battled in his last start against the Royals and uh, gave the Twins a good chance, just one earned run and six innings pitch. And the Northland Ford defense for the Twins. Jordan Schaefer back out there in left field. Danny Santana in center. Oswaldo Arcia in right. Blue and Escobar left side of the infield. Dozier and Parmalee on the right side today with Eric Fryer doing the catching. Now the Twins came home Sunday night. Enjoyed an off day on Monday. Game last night, game today, then back on the road. And stepping in the box, Everett Cabrera. He'll be followed by Solarte and Smith. Padres, as we discussed at length last night, have done a much better job scoring runs. And the first pitch is swing and a miss, strike one. As we go down the San Diego lineup, you'll see a lot of very small batting averages. Cabrera leading off, hitting at 228. But the thing to keep in mind with one more game left against the Padres, these numbers almost across the board are coming up. Give you some idea how much they struggled to score runs before the break. Now in the second half, a game like last night where they only scored one run really stands out. And picked up nicely by Dozier on the first top one away. And in the first half of the year, a three to one loss to the Padres was pretty commonplace. But now in the second half of the year, as we mentioned, three times already since the break, they've scored 10 or more runs. And the other thing that jumps out is when you see these uh, very, very low batting averages, that's when uh, at the same time, they all of almost all of them hitting over 300 in the second half. Right. So they've, <laughs> they've come from way down there. You can see the pitching has again led the way for the Padres to a winning record uh, in the second half. Here is Jan Hervis Solarte. Playing at third base, the position he played against the Twins while a member of the New York Yankees. Chase Headley going to the Yankees, providing a more veteran established player at third base. Check swing, one and one. And I think in uh, all three organizations that Salarte has, uh, uh, for whom Salarte has played, everyone has. Thought that he could hit. The question was going to be where was he going to play on defense? Right. He was with the Twins uh, early in, in his career. Good pitch there. Change up from uh, Correa, which I think is the second most important pitch for him to him to throw. I think he, throwing that slow curveball, as Tim Logger mentioned in the uh, pregame show, very very important. And then that change up to left-handers. If he has command of that, it's it's going to be very very beneficial for him. Blocked by Fryer. We'll see that a lot today. I asked Ron Gardenhire this morning how he would rate Fryer's defensive skills as a catcher, and he uh, went to some length to describe how great he is at blocking pitches. Now, nobody on base, it's not that big of a deal, but still it something is, that catch. It is with two strikes. Yeah. <laughs> two and two. Call third strike. Nice, nice little cutter right there from uh, Kevin Correa freezes uh, Solarte. But you make a really good point, Dick, about blocking pitches. As we look, how good that pitch is down and on the inside corner. The ball starts out looking like a fastball, cuts in. Very, very nice pitch with uh, with two strikes. But you made a real good point about catchers blocking, specifically Eric Fryer blocking pitches even when nobody's on. You can't. Uh, turn the spigot off and on. Right, you know, right. you, didn't, you you can't say, well, I don't need to block this one. That it, it's not really a, uh, necessary right now. You just have to. When you see those balls, you just have to block. You have to do it fundamentally right all the time, all the time. Because when there's a runner on third base, you you can't you can't have not done it for a while or gotten in the habit of not doing it correctly. Well, watch it here. Curveball in, in. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought no. we we're going to see that. That's nice, nice frame of the uh, of that. Uh, pitch by uh, Fryer, also a very good receiver of the ball. 
And those are the things Gardy talked about too, how he received the ball and how he framed it. Now, I think there's a misconception framing might involve moving the glove. That's kind of a high school thing. Umpires don't like catchers to do that, but to catch the ball and and just hold it uh, and give the umpire a chance to see it, if that makes any sense, uh, is what they're talking about when they're talking about framing a pitch. Dribbler to Parmalee and a good first inning for Kevin Correa. I was hoping to have time. Back on the road, West Coast trip beginning uh, four game series tomorrow night in Oakland in the Menards batting order for the Twins manager today. Danny Santana, of course, in the leadoff spot. Then Brian Dozier, Trevor Blue, Kenny Vargas, Oswaldo Arcia, Chris Parmley, Eduardo Escobar, Eric Fryer, and Jordan Shaker. All right, your turn. Odor Saba de Spagne is uh, on the mound for the uh, San Diego Padres, making only his eighth start. Havana born and uh, played baseball in uh, in Cuba. Only his eighth start, 229 opponent batting average. We're looking at 2.68. That's 13th best in the uh, National League in just seven starts for the rookie. And Santana takes a fastball, strike one. Santana, Dozier, and Plouf. Twins winning last night, three to one. All three runs produced on Vargas's home run. One and one. I think what the Twins have uh, got in mind for the next couple of years as the team gets better. Papa and Rondal gives way to the first baseman. Alonzo calls him off one away. Take a look at the Padres in the field. Seth Smith is in left. Will Venable in center and Jeff Francoeur in right. Salarte, Cabrera, Jerko, and Alonzo the infielders. Grandal behind the plate. With the Twins envision happening in the next couple of years as they become better, as they will uh, not coincidentally be more athletic, have more speed both in the infield and the outfield with the arrival. Of uh, Byron Buxton, maybe Aaron Hicks will join him in the outfield. You've got Santana, very athletic and fast player. And to that extent, or for uh, in that sense, Jordan Schaefer kind of fits the mold of what the Twins envision themselves being in a couple of years. Yeah, Kenny Vargas and Miguel Sano might clog it up a little bit, but <laughs> you know, it's okay if if they trot and everybody else runs like crazy. Right. One and one to Dozier. A couple of doubles last night. And he shoots one out of the reach of Jerko. And Dozier uses the opposite field for his first hit today. We've talked about it before. This is the kind of swing and the kind of approach that, that Brian Dozier will need to adopt if he's going to get from 240 to 280. And I think he will at some point in time. 
Trevor Fluke will hit next. From All America Scouting Report on Despagne, remember El Duque? Tom Bernanski told me very, very much like Orlando Hernandez who pitched for the uh, Yankees. Multiple pitches and arm angles, and he just wants to stay away, away, away. That's not a bad idea, is it, to pitch away? <laughs> not if you can throw it out there for strikes. It's not bad at all. But we'll see a lot of funny uh, deliveries, different arm angles, different pitches. Fastball and a foul tip, one strike. Even the home run hit by Vargas was a breaking ball that was on the outer half of the plate. Vargas reached out, put the barrel of the bat on it, and still had the uh, strength to pull it well over the wall in right. One strike to Plouffe. There goes Dozier. And Dozier is safe at second. And an immediate look into the Padre dugout from Jen Jerko. If it stands. Dozier getting a little debris up in his eyes. If it stands, it will be Dozier's 18th steal of the year. In real time, I thought he was in there. I thought the tag was high. That's what umpires will look at. They look at the tag and the tag up on the shoulder. They're assuming the hand gets in there first. He's out. I think. Jarko, Jarko might be might be right about this if Bud Black decides to challenge. Looks like he got him just yeah. before his hand uh, got there. Umpires will always see a higher tag. But again, this is the, the the timing of the play. If this were in the fourth, fifth, or sixth inning, it would be challenged. But because it's the first inning, Bud Black is coming off the mound or going off the field, and he's not going to risk um, the possibility of a whimsical call from New York. It appeared on replay that Dozier was tagged. Instead, it will be a stolen base, and Plouffe will hit. And it's a one-two count now. I think it's interesting the way uh, the pressure that's put on the uh, the video analyst in the Twins case, uh, Sean Harlan. Sean Harlan, and what a nice job he's done. But they actually have to communicate what they think the manager ought to do. It, it probably. Too close to call, right? I mean, I think he's out, but you might in the it may not be a first inning call, right? right. And uh, nobody else can see it, but the uh, but the fellow that's looking at the in the video booth. And that was might not have been clear and convincing enough to. So you know. since it was called safe, right? Then the the video coordinator has to make a call. I would think say, you know what, he's out, but. Don't know if it's convincing enough evidence. Deep to left field, off the bat of Plouffe to the corner. Gone, a home run. Plouffe's eighth of the year, and the Twins jump out in front two to nothing. Really, really nice two strike hitting there by Trevor Plouffe, and it was set up by his approach to pitch before that. He was beat. Beaten a little bit and fouled the ball off to the right, which means he was waiting well, and so he wasn't out in front of that curveball. Hands stay back, weight stays back just long enough, gets a hanger, and pulls that one. So even though he was looking to go the other way with the fastball, this is what happens when you do that with two strikes. You were much, much better on the curveball. Really, really nice approach and swing by Trevor Proof. I don't know what this uh, discussion would be about with home plate umpire Marvin Hudson and Bud Black, whether it in any way is related to the prior play at second base. Now, we did see Black coming off the field while the, I don't know which coach it was, was on the phone. Yet with the video guy, and I don't know whether he is saying that hey, we weren't done potentially challenging the call yet. I, it's just a guess on my part. I don't know what else this would be. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good guess because Dave Roberts, the bench coach, was on the phone during that at bat with uh, with Trevor. But you know, if you're not done yet, stay on the field. I, I mean, yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, what's the umpire supposed to do if you go back in the dugout and? Don't say anything. Well, here's Vargas hitting cleanup. 
Plouffe's home run almost a mirror image of the home run Vargas hit a hanging breaking ball maybe in the uh, outer half of the plate and Plouffe was able to pull it down the line as Vargas did last night inside 2 and 0. Oh. Vargas with seven runs batted in in four games. Someone asked Ron Gardenhire, you know, Joe Maurer comes back, had a successful rehab game last night as a designated hitter, you know, with the twins send Vargas down, and basically Gardy says, Well, they send him down, I'm on the plane with him. I want to watch him hit. <laughs> Inside three and one with Arcia on deck. Got a cutter inside. Just a terrific at bat for the young man to go up there and look at the uh, look for the curveball and get it and press it in the right field. And, it was a really, really nice at bat in terms of his being able to look for it. This will foul. Because I was watching his body language as he went up there, knowing that he's full well he, from up here, knowing he's going to get curveballs, right? And and uh, his body language was so good. It was a nice, slow, controlled, I know exactly what the speed's going to be type of stride. And that's a, that's a good pitch right there for the big man to take. He's been swinging over the top of that pitch. Despagne has been pitching him inside, trying to quicken him up just so he could throw him that slider down at the back foot. And Vargas able to see it early and, and lay off of it. He's going to go Yahtzee here in a rel relatively short time with all these firsts. He's going to have one in every column. That's his first major league walk. He's been hit by a pitch. What uh, Vargas said after the game last night was just as impressive as maybe the home run himself. Here's Arcia. You may remember last night, Josh Willingham had a long at bat right before Vargas's with the same two men on base. And Willingham ended up swinging through a curveball and striking out. And Vargas said he was in the on deck circle and he was watching and paying attention and came to the plate with a pretty good idea that he was going to see mostly curveballs. That and the fact that he struck out on a curveball earlier. But here's a guy in his fourth big league game coming up from double A and he's got the presence of mind and the aptitude to be in the on deck circle and and uh, not look around at the all the people in the stands and thinking about his at bat. He was watching the uh, batter in the box from the on deck circle. Well that's kind of what I was getting at the poise and, and maturity that is showing early. The Padres had video of uh, him striking out on curveballs in Chicago. There's no question that's the only only thing that they have been able to see from Kenny Vargas. Garcia pops it up to short center. Venable with the catch two away. And so they based on the fact that that uh, he got hit a fastball off of uh, Sale, he had, uh, base hits on fastballs, struck out on curveballs. They threw him a bunch of curveballs last night and, uh, and struck him out. They were going to throw him curveballs. There's no question. And for uh, and for Vargas to say, okay, if that's the way you're going to pitch me, because he also hammered a fastball to center field for an out. So, so they're going to throw me curveballs. That it, it's one thing to know that. It's another thing to come up from Double A and say I'm in the big leagues. I'm in a big situation. What? Heck, I'm just going to look for that curveball. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody has the has the courage to do it because he, if you're wrong, you take two fastballs down the middle with two guys on, you feel like feel pretty foolish. But he was convinced that he was going to get curveballs. He was absolutely right about that. And then to have the nice controlled stride, curveball speed, and, and get the job done was really really good. Two strikes to Parmalee. Oh and two. The twins first baseman. One and two.
So far from Despagne, we've seen fastballs, we've seen cutters, we've seen sliders, we've seen slower curveballs, and we've seen a changeup. Lab will throw anything, anytime. And swung through an off-speed pitch, ending the inning. Highlighted by Trevor Plouffe's home run, his eighth of the year, putting the Twins in front 2-0. Black after the Trevor Plouffe home run has lingered into this uh, period between uh, the first and second inning. And I have no idea yet what it's all about. The uh, replay uh, headset was used and no conversation between either a uh, Bud Black, Ron Gardenhire, and the crew chief Hunter Wendelstedt, but we'll uh, try to find out what's been kind of a curious situation here early in this game, and uh, it's not the only curious situation that we've had in this little two-game series. There's a situation last night where it looked like Oswaldo Arcia had a stolen base, and then he was denied the stolen base and sent back to first base. What was that all about? The result is something I've never ever in all my years in baseball seen. It looked like Bud Black was arguing for catch uh, for batter interference at a catcher. And uh, if that were going to be the case of a rule interference or the runner would be out. The runner was not out. A pop up left side of the infield. Ploof. Now coming in and still coming and putting it away one down. The runner was not ruled out, so there was no catcher interference, but he was put back on first base. And as, as it turns out, evidently the home plate umpire ruled that it was incidental contact by Kurt Suzuki at the as a hitter with the catcher, and that he, the umpire, can deem where the whether the runner ought to be allowed second base or sent back to first without being made out because it wasn't catch uh, batters interference but there was a significant enough incidental contact that they weren't going to allow the stolen base so Arcia was sent back to first on incidental contact even though he had stolen second there was no batter interference I've never seen that before one strike to Jed Jerko two strikes so far so good for Correa four up four down One and two to Jerko.
the number 19 on the Padre uniform tops of course and put there in memory of Tony Gwynn who passed away about a month ago fly ball right field RC a calling for it two down. Let's uh, get some enlightenment if we can from Kevin Gore. Well guys I talked to Rick Anderson earlier today about the hit or miss season that Kevin Correa is having it's been streaky it's been really good or it's been really bad and he said it's real simple when he's on he's getting ahead in the count he's trusting his stuff down low and and to Roy Smalley's point in the first inning he's got a curveball that's working the curveball is the key pitch to the whole sequence for Kevin Correa if that curveball is on we just saw him try it 0 2 in this last at bat he's all right if it isn't then he's in trouble we'll see how it progresses today but so far it looks pretty good. Well, thank you uh, Kevin. Strike one to Venable. We've just found out what the discussion has been about. Apparently, the replay system in the Padres clubhouse is down. That's why they didn't challenge the call at second base. That's why Dave Roberts was on the phone for so long trying to get a look or get some confirmation that it should be challenged or not. But the video equipment wasn't working. Here's a ball hooked foul. And then wouldn't you know it, they can't challenge a call at second base that looked like the second out. And then Bluff hits a home run. And Bud Black came out probably to say, well, what am I supposed to do? I, I can't challenge something without the replay working in our clubhouse. One and two to Will Venable. Now when they were trying to set up the replay equipment I believe what I was told when we were in Chicago at the very beginning of the season there was a scenario where the twins uh, clubhouse video equipment wasn't working properly and that in that instance bouncer to second the White Sox would not have been able to use their replay system either which of course seems fair a couple of one two three innings for Kevin Correa. on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces, serving in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea. They are watching around the world in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan, and we welcome all of you around the world, and thank you for your service. Now, a, a delay on the field again, and... Uh, this is the uh, crew chief Hunter Wendelstead who is talking to the Padre dugout. And what we believe has happened is the San Diego replay equipment is not workable. And uh, therefore the twins cannot use theirs although we haven't seen any discussion with the twins dugout about anything like this. But again between innings Hunter Wendelstead was in communication with New York. 
Despagne is on the mound waiting to get things started here in the second inning. He'll face Escobar, Fryer, and Schaefer. The center a base hit for Escobar on the first pitch at the bottom of the second inning. That'll bring up Eric Fryer. Time now for you to tweet a photo using hashtag North Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Eric Fryer enjoyed a Sunday afternoon in Chicago, hitting his second major league home run, first of this year. So yesterday I had to be reminded by Eric about his first major league home run here at Target Field against Tommy Malone, who he might be catching uh, shortly Malone with the Oakland A's last year. One and zero oh to Eric Fryer. I was at that ball game when Eric hit that ball in the bullpen, he just crashed it. Escobar takes off and the pitch flipped foul into the seats. Hit run play by, uh, put on by manager Ron Gardenhier there is seeing Despondie around the plate. Eric Fryer can handle the bat a little bit. So try to get something started. And I really think that back to your point in inning a goal, Dick, when you, you're talking about the roster developing into one of, of some pretty good speed, I think that fits Ron Gardenhier's style a lot. I think he likes to be able to steal and hit and run if he's got the, the right kind of guys in, in those situations. And we're starting to see those guys show up on the major league roster. And I think Gardy likes it. The most exciting teams he's had have been teams that, you know, created some havoc on the bases. The other thing, too, is that especially right now with this lineup, they're not going to hit with the exception of potentially Kenny Vargas. Beautiful, uh, beautiful hit and run. run. With the second baseman Jerko covering, Fryer bounced it right where he used to be. First and third, nobody out. The one thing that you're told it, it, uh, when you're at the plate and you get the hit and run sign is hit it anywhere but up the middle because that's where the, uh, the one of the middle infield is going to cover on what appears to be a steal. Fire almost did that, but got it just far enough behind Jorko, where it turned out to be a beautiful hit it where they ain't hit well. First and third, nobody out, and now Jordan Schaefer. Single in the first pitch he saw in a twins uniform. Stole a base in the next pitch. Later laid down a sacrifice bunt. And he bunted it into himself. Was he in the box? He was out of the box and he's out. Home plate umpire Marvin Hudson made the call, then looked for confirmation, I think, from Mike DeMuro up the third baseline. And Schaefer tried to get a run in and get a base hit here. I don't know if he was out of the box or not. I don't think he was out of the box based on that. We'll have a pretty good look at it right here. He had not taken a step out of the box. So right. watch his, his back foot go to the chalk line. He gets hit. He's still in the box. Yep. And I wonder if that's a situation where neither team can use uh, replay right now. Well, we've been told that the Twins are still able to use their replay capability. But I don't know that that is a reviewable play. Oh, that's probably right. Fouled off the screen, Santana trying to get Escobar in from third with Fryer at first. The catcher Grundahl given credit for a putout because he was the closest guy around. And the runners remain in place, first and third, one down. Santana hit a pop up, caught by Alonzo in his first at bat. That hit him or not. And now Ron Gardenhire saying, hey, the ball hit him. That is a reviewable call. Santana was uh, hit by the pitch, he claims. So does Ron Gardenhire. 
and right off the kneecap. You can see the deflection right there. An abrupt. And now they're going to review this. So the Twins will be benefited from a replay here. When apparently the Reds, uh, the uh, Padres, if the situation was reversed, would not be able to <laughs> take advantage of the replay. What they will see is what we just showed you twice that the ball changed direction once it got near the knee area of Santana. So we think the Twins will have the bases loaded for Brian Dozier and one out. It's amazing that Santana, who's now walking toward first base, wasn't really stung by this. Right off the tip of the kneecap. No question that ball was was redirected. You can see it pretty clearly. It, you know, and the knees and kneecaps are funny. There are some places you can get hit on the knee and it absolutely paralyzes your lower leg. You can't even can't even move. And and sometimes you get hit and you think, boy, that's gonna really hurt, and it doesn't. Every time, Roy, every time I've crunched my knee into a tabletop, it hurts like crazy. <laughs> every, there's no toss of the coin every time I've done that. Well, maybe players are just a little tougher <laughs> than broadcasters. I don't know. <laughs> that might very well be true. <laughs> the call on the field is a ball to Santana, but the ball pitch clearly changed direction. Which is why Grandal didn't catch it in the first place. And so we will wait, and I'm not sure why there is this uh, longer wait here. And I believe it was the back knee, perhaps. But you could see that. Grandal had the pitch covered. He was ready to catch it. And they will award Santana first base. He was standing in the first base coach's box anyway. I don't know that this situation has occurred uh, in baseball this year. Certainly not in a Twins game where one clubhouse has replay capability and can benefit from it as the Twins just have, and the other clubhouse has a Technical malfunction. Bases are full for Dozier, one out here in the second inning. Strike on the outside corner. Two minutes and 17 seconds, the official replay delay. Low breaking ball hits the corner. It's the first time we've seen that super slow breaking ball from Despagne. 68 miles an hour. That's it. And again, you see the spin on the uh, curveball, and you recognize that it is, and you're just not not ready for that slow a speed. A little roller to the right side, and a force play at home. Escobar retired a good play by Alonzo on a slow roller. And the bases are reloaded now with two out. Good heads up play by Alonzo. Really, he had a play at second base uh, if he wanted it, but if he makes that uh, backhand uh, catch cleanly, he's got a, a pretty easy play at the plate. Helped by the fact that it's a uh, forced play at the plate. Good presence of mind, nice athletic play. Two down and the base is loaded. Plouffe comes up and he hit a home run to give the Twins a 2 nothing lead. In the third inning, Mike Pomerantz, who does some games for the Padres and, of course, is the former Channel 11 anchorman, uh, is going to come over and uh, sit in my chair. And I'm going to go sit in his chair for an inning and work the Padre broadcast. And the uh, exchange. Is uh, not even up. Uh, Fox oh, Sports yeah, North team is. We got to get a little more. Yeah, we got to get a little consideration. Pre and post game <laughs> producer to be named later. 
There's Mark Grant. I'll be working with him and Michael come over here and uh, work with Roy Smalley during the third inning. There's a strike call, two and one. Big call there on a pitch that looked like it might have been up and away. And instead of it being three and oh, it's two and one. Yeah, that's an odd call right there. That's a, a pitch that uh, Despondia doesn't even want to throw that pitch up there, up and away. It looked like it was not even a pitch an umpire would consider. Lazy fly to left. And the Twins have filled the bases and leave them that way with a 2 nothing lead. Mike Pomerantz and Roy Smalley will bring you the third inning. Or nothing. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to welcome my buddy to the booth, Mike uh, Pomerantz, the play-by-play uh, -play, uh, uh, announcer for the San Diego Padres and a good buddy of mine. We used to work together when uh, you started this uh, sports gig a couple years ago. Great to have you here. Oh, buddy, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me up in the booth. I do appreciate it. It does, uh, brings back a lot of memories for me. <laughs> you you know, get my toe too. in the water there with you. <laughs> Uh, with the twins back in what was it now 2010 2010 was it that long ago Mike? been a while but been well, a while it's great to have you back here world looks like it's treating you pretty well and you as well although uh, you had uh, that San Diego year round stuff how's uh, how's that treating you that weather out there oh you're a California kid <laughs> you know that I know I guess I, I guess I remember you go to USC and grow up out there and have a son it, it University of San Diego. He, he went to the University of San Diego many years ago. I didn't think we were going to get him back, he, uh, but he did. He came back home with a wetsuit and a surfboard. They hated the weather out there, right? <laughs> Can't stand it. Came back, needed a little bit of the snow. <laughs> yeah. No, it's gorgeous out there, and there's no question. No one's ever going to argue with the weather, but it's great to be back and see everybody in Minnesota, and the fans have just been so gracious. Really do appreciate all the well wishes. Yonder Alonzo, Yasmani Grandal, Jeff Francoeur. Facing the former Padre Kevin Correa, the top of the third. Been a tough road to hoe for the Padres. Don't know how many of you American League fans been keeping tabs on what's going on out west. Well, we know that it's uh, a bit of a rebuilding uh, time for the Padres, as uh, as it's turning out to be for this Twins ball club as well. Alonzo in the right center field, and a one hop the wall. He's around first and pull up with a double boy under Alonzo. That's one of the guys that the Padres look to get going. Well, tell me about him a little bit, Mike, because he came in here hitting about 217, and he looked has looked like a 317 hitter at, at, at least against the Twins. A fastball down the middle, and he's hit three balls that pitch three times, two doubles and a home run. Same pitch, fastball in the middle of the plate, and he has not missed them. Tell you what, that single double and a home run yesterday. That was really the offense for the Padres. He's been a bit of an enigma. Came over from the Reds in a trade a couple of years back. Really thought he was going to be a gap-to-gap -gap type guy. 
Um, some thought maybe he decided he wanted to try to pull the ball a little bit, which you may or may not know at Petco. That's you're not leaving that ballpark that easily. It's a pitcher's ballpark, but I think maybe chasing long ball kind of hurt yonder. And um, he's had some hand injuries as well. Missed some time on the uh, disabled list last year and this year. And the Padres offense historically poor this season. All the guys struggling doing a little bit better here in the second half. And Yasmani Grandal came over from the Reds as part of that trade that brought over Yonder Alonso. A couple of guys Padres are leaning on. But you know, talking to you and, and Dick Bramer and Ron Gardenhire about the Twins, you have some people in the pipeline, it seems. We always hear about the Miguel Sano, for one, and your young center fielder, Santana. But Santana's likely going to be your shortstop it sounds like yeah there's Danny Santana playing center field uh, here out of absolute emergency necessity for uh, Ron Gardenhire a number down to third base ploof the bare hand long throw and it will get Grandal does not run well and Alonzo moves over to third base fine play there by Trevor Ploof he's about as good as it gets over there with the bare hand play at third this ball right down the line, bare hands it nicely, accurate throw. And look at the spin on this ball. That's why he grabs with his whole hand, you see right there, and then transfers to a throwing grip. A lot of guys make the mistake of trying to grab it with the thumb and two fingers that are the throwing grip, and that ball will spin right out of there, Mike. And so uh, nice play by Trevor, staying with that spin, grabbing it with his full hand before he transfers to his throwing grip. They have strong hands. Here's Jeff Francoeur. Frenchie, they call it. Nine years in the big leagues. Signs with the Padres. Goes to Triple A El Paso. Gets the call to come back up. Great guy. I think one of the forgotten players. Because you think of him, he's been in the league so long, you think of him as an older player than he is. Just 30 years old, though. That's been Frank Coors issue. Uh, he's a swinger at the plate. There's no question about it. He's not up there to take. And uh, I think we all have anybody that's followed uh, Frank Coeur when he was with the uh, Kansas City Royals. And uh, even when he's back with uh, Atlanta, uh, he came up into the, into the league as a young guy swinging the bat. And it, you almost you almost can't walk him. And he almost it does, almost doesn't matter where you throw it. If you throw it in the middle of the plate, he can have a pretty good hack at it. But he's swinging. You walk him, it's your fault. It's your fault. But you mentioned the, uh, the the pipeline and the young players for the uh, for the twins, and we're starting to see it a lot earlier than we expected. You mentioned Danny Santana, who is in center field, probably right now looked at as the shortstop of the future for the for the twins. Kenny Vargas come up oh. making a big big splash in the uh, big leagues immediately, making the jump from Double A all the way up here, and then of course as Frank Cruz swings at another ball in the dirt, and a nice block. There by uh, Eric Fryer. We'll continue talking about these uh, young players. In the meantime, Target Field has become the top choice for families throughout Twins territory for all kinds of special occasions and commemorations. Groups of 25 or more qualify for special ticket discounts and can reserve certain seats without a deposit. Organize your family group outing at Target Field. Find out more at twinsbaseball.com backslash groups or call 833 twins to schedule a special night at a twins game with your family. Is there such thing as a, a night here that's not beautiful? This park is magnificent. Yes, I know you got to contend with the weather now and again, but the ballpark itself it, stunning. It never looks other than beautiful. That's for, that's for sure. And it, sometimes you're looking at beauty a, a little bit chillier than others <laughs> uh, early in the season, but you know, the Twins have been lucky with um, with weather for the most part. Haven't been weathered out of too many games. Been uncomfortable a few games, but I, I have to tell you, I, I'm, a, I'm a convert. Everybody knows that this Southern California boy doesn't like cold weather and really wanted a roof on this, uh, on this stadium. But as I've seen roofs in other ballparks, as those... Dozier makes the play. I really like the no-roof look of this ball play. Saw a double by Alonzo. Nothing happened. Twins lead 2-0.
Padres. Here's a game summary. Get you caught up on the action. Here. Yeah, let's get caught up. A uh, disputed call here at second base, but the Padres can't uh, go to the replay because their replay equipment not working. Trevor Plouffe up next hits it, gets a hang and break. The ball hits it in the seats for a, uh, the two runs that the Twins have scored. M maybe uh, lack of video equipment costing the Padres a uh, run there. I'm not entirely convinced Dick Bramer didn't pull the plug. Because <laughs> all of a sudden he's not in the booth. The Padre replay system is out. And we spoke to the league, and it turns out the Twins are allowed to keep their replay system intact, even though the Padres is out. Now, I, I think the Padres must be out because of Padre issues, not because of target field uh, what we internet just, issues. Or sure, whatever. that's what you'd like to believe, isn't it, young man? <laughs> we know you guys. We know the way this thing works. But it's just kind of, a, I'm not sure where baseball fans in general stand on the replay system. What are your thoughts? You like it? You know, I didn't like it at first. Um, I have been surprised with the number of plays that have been overturned, and in that in that sense, in the uh, in, in the spirit of getting the play right, I'm starting to warm to it a little bit. I, I, I really am. A bit of pace of play concerns. Yeah, it, it is a pace of play, and we watch a uh, fastball painting the outside corner on Kenny Vargas. He, he has been pitched uh, by Despagne. Has been pitched inside uh, the whole game until there, and just uh, caught him maybe looking in a real good pitch on the outside corner. But yeah, baseball has some pace of play uh, issues for a lot of people anyway, and so to add to that with the uh, with the replays, I thought would be uh, would be a big issue. But on the other hand, what I've seen is some real anticipation among the, the fans, it, it, especially at the ballpark. I see a grounds one foul. They show the replays uh, that every, that they're looking at up on the big screens. There's some anticipation in the, in uh, on, on the part of the fans in the stands, and I can you can kind of tell some electricity, and some uh, anxiety. So in that way, it hasn't seemed to bother the people that are uh, watching here at the ballpark. Padres playing the shift, and Arcia goes the other way. Cabrera puts it away. Two down here in the third inning. You believe this? I want to get something going and the twins going here, not because I want to jump on you a little bit, but I, I want to sit here and talk to you a while. We're just, this thing's flying by. It isn't right. It isn't right. I think you're just trying to rub salt in the wound. And the <laughs> twins here leading two nothing. And you know, even though I'm in San Diego and I keep an eye on the American League and all things baseball, I always have that warm spot in my heart for the organization and all the the fans and, and folks who got the chance to work with everybody at Fox Sports North has been just absolutely wonderful and. Uh, Gave me a start. Yeah, it's great it having a you a part of our team. This. It really was. Wish that uh, you hadn't decided that you really had to go to that San Diego weather. But. And like I said, the weather's been a crippler. Otherwise, okay. Everett Cabrera will get Parmalee. Thanks, brother. Two nothing. Twins lead. Great being with you. It's great to see you, Roy. Thanks for the time. Thanks for stopping by with us. Back with more Twins baseball. Two nothing lead. Come on, Roy. Give me a break, will you? <laughs>
by Century Link, your link to what's next. By Northland Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealers today. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. Twins in front, two to nothing. Thanks to Mike Pomerantz for giving me a bit of a break uh, during the third inning, going over and uh, spending an inning with Mark Grant on the uh, San Diego network. Not exactly sure what you mean by that, getting a break. From, well. uh, in here, but, but it was also nice to have uh, Pomerantz in here. <laughs> he did some uh, pre and post game stuff for uh, Fox Sports North before he moved to San Diego. 1 0. Oh. And Solarte takes a strike one and one. Solarte, Smith, and Medica here in the fourth. Correa pitched around a leadoff double in the third, the only base runner the Padres have had. Oh, short fly ball to right. Dozier drifting back in the outfield grass. One down. And that'll bring up Smith. Saturday, MLB on Fox Sports 1 returns with a doubleheader as the Yankees head to the Bronx to face Michael Brantley. And the Indians followed by the Cardinals taking on the Orioles. Plus you can catch the Twins and A's starting at 7.30 p.m. Coverage beginning Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Central only on Fox Sports 1. Streaming live on Fox Sports Go. One gone on the fourth. Smith hit a ground ball to Parmalee his first time up. Strike one on the outside corner. Padres go to Pittsburgh. They have an off day tomorrow in Pittsburgh. Twins go to Oakland to open up a four game series against that vaunted and improved starting rotation. Tough to think about being able to improve that starting rotation, yeah. but they have for <laughs> immensely. A's came here and swept the Twins in the first. Series of the year here at Target Field, outscoring the Twins 21 to 8. And now four games in Oakland. One and two. It's going to be interesting to see how things shake out and shake down in the American League West. Two game lead now for Oakland over the Angels. Chopper Correa was on his way down as the ball was getting to him, but he was able to get it in the glove. Two down. Correa clearly a surfer in San Diego, not a ba <laughs> not a basketball player, but <laughs> the uh, timing of the jump just good enough. But since he is uh, the best athlete on the field, <laughs> he was able to hang in the air just long enough to get that ground ball. Two down. Medica, the hitter. Breaking ball, missing. Ball one. Ray of San Diego area native, played for the Padres for a couple of years and had a Kevin Correa type of year. Missing inside 2 0. Oh. Correa with just five wins this year, but one of them against the Padres. And it was a quality start. And that's what Kevin prides himself in. Doesn't have a wealth of stuff. He's not going to overpower anybody. To Hopper pass Plouffe and in the left field for a single. But he wants to keep his team in games and give his team as many quality starts as he can. And for the most part, he's done that. There was one stretch early in the season as we look at a uh, sinker that stayed high and in the middle of the zone and Medica able to just get out of um, the reach of Trevor Plouffe. By season's end, when you put the numbers together for Correa, I think you'd have to say the Twins got their money's worth, given the price of high price of top level starting pitching. Twins have been where they've been the last year and a half, not.
because of Kevin Correa, but the pitching uh, disappointments elsewhere. Mike Pelfrey didn't have a good year last year. The Twins were looking for better things this year, and turns out he wasn't whole. He wasn't ready to give the Twins that second year uh, bounce that you, pitchers typically get after Tommy John surgery. Right, hurt his shoulder and then had some nerve right. issue in his uh, in his elbow. Ricky Nolasco, as it turns out, hasn't felt 100 percent for for a couple of years. Couple of years. Yeah. Two strikes to Jerko. Breaking ball down the line and a fair ball into the corner. Medica around second on his way to third. He's going to be waved around. Throw to uh, Dozier comes to the plate not in time and prior to the nice job picking up a one hop throw. So a pair of two out hits for the Padres and their first run of the afternoon. Go with a double driving in his 30 second run. Yeah, one of the few mistakes that Kevin's made is a high hanging uh, breaking ball there that Jerko actually does a pretty nice job of uh, waiting and going the other way with it. Ball up and moving away from him, and ball up there, hitters have a chance to uh, drive it over the infielder's head, and he was able to score Medica all the way from first. Will Venable tying run at second, two away. Speared by Parmalee, a wicked liner hooking down the line. But Parmalee with a catch for the third out. It's a 2 1 ball game. Stay tuned for this important message from Mesh Besher and Spence. RBI double making it a two to one ball game. Bottom third of the Twins of batting order will hit in the fourth. Our carsoup.com trivia question Who's the only pitcher to lose 100 games for the San Diego Padres? Randy Jones. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, I thought he was the answer last night. Right. Here's Escobar. Singled on the first pitch he saw in the second inning, taking strike one. Fryer and Schaefer will follow. Well, there just haven't been that many pitchers uh, for the Padres that pitched enough games to qualify for either one of those trivia questions. You know, when you think about it, this is a franchise that came into existence in 1969, same time as the Royals and the Pilots and the Expos. Baseball expanded, two teams in each league. And they've gotten to the World Series and never won it. You can understand why the passing of Tony Gwynn is. Sadly expected as it might have been really hit the organization in the area hard because he was and still is their guy. They haven't had a lot of you know marquee guys that you would associate with the Padres. 
Dave Winfield was in the uh, early years of his career he was Mr. Padre until Tony Gwynn came along and Winfield finished his career in this league one and one to Fryer two and one the twins have four Hall of Famers representing the twins and the Padres have I believe just one I believe Dave Winfield uh, wore a Yankee cap I believe in his Hall of Fame plaque. Two and one to Fryer. Two and two, excuse me. Well, Tony Gwynn's passing really does kind of put that bookend on that era of Padres baseball. There's no question. It's a it, it is a whole new uh, organization now officially. Tony Gwynn uh, was a Rod Carew now facing prototype hitter. And here's number 3,000. On this date in 1999 in Montreal. And I know that baseball fans know and understand how good Tony Gwynn was and and what some of his numbers are. But the man hit 338 for 20 seasons. Yeah. I mean, that's that's Rogers Hornsby era type stuff. I mean, that just amazing. Schaefer dropped down a bunt and it was ruled that the ball hit the ground and then hit him after he left the box. And uh, our replay showed that he had not left the box yet. So he is 0 for 1 and Despagne is set down seven men in a row. Liner off the wrist of Jerko and into right field. Schaefer has another base hit. And it comes with two outs, and we would expect him to steal second here with two gone. Nice swing by Schaefer there, line drive that handcuffs Jerko. Nothing he could do about that. Couldn't get close enough to get in front of it, and then it's just a total, uh, it's a mount or a situation of total luck whether you can get your glove in the right spot on that in between hop when it's hit that hard. So Larte is backing up at third base. For a moment, he was about 60 feet from home plate. Padres got a couple of two out hits in their half of the fourth to score a run. We'll see what the Twins can do after Schaefer's two out single. Yeah, this is a classic steal situation. Everybody in both dugouts understands that, and that's why the pitch out. I was wondering, I was just going to say before that pitch out, it's a cat and mouse game here between managers of when. The uh, runner's going to go when the manager's going to pitch out, how long the pitcher is, is going to hold the ball, how many times he's going to throw over. But we're going to see a lot of that because everybody knows that this is a steal situation. There's a little quick pitch. That's another way that the uh, pitcher will try to control the, uh, the runner a little bit. So from a pitcher standpoint, you see changing the speeds or the, or the timing of his delivery to play, throwing over, stepping off. And then depending on the counts, a manager but black to set trying to decide when he wants to pitch out. There goes Schaefer. Got almost a pitch out kind of pitch, but Schaefer gets there anyway. The throw was high. I'm not sure it would have mattered. I think we're dealing with a can't even call him a young man anymore, but a player with exceptional acceleration. I will tell you what, he, he, it wasn't a great jump, but there was some big time acceleration. He's watch here, right there, he, he just turns on the Jets and I think from the second half the last 45 feet he was moving outside three and one and you saw at the end what makes me cringe every time I see a guy slide head first like most runners do now Cabrera fielded the throw had to go airborne to do it and his feet landed so close to Schaefer's hand as it was reaching for the bag. Oh, foul. Look out. So the throw is high, and the shortstop has to leap for it. And watch where his feet come down. The left foot almost landed on top of the right hand. Three and two to Santana. It's dangerous out there. And he fouls it off his leg. One of the remarkable things about Santana, we've talked about it 
his ability to come through in situations like this on a team that has struggled with men in scoring position all year long. Santana despite his inexperience has been uh, one of the best. See if he can come through here and get the run back for the twins that the Padres got in the top of the inning. And he takes a walk the ball to the backstop and Schaefer will advance to third. First and third now for Dozier target field suites are available for single game rental for groups of 16 to 96. Choose from premier suites the flexible event suites or the very spacious skyline suites. Make coming to a twins game an extra special experience by renting a private suite for an upcoming game. You can call 833 twins or go to twinsbaseball.com. The pitch there uh, ruled a pass ball, allowing Schaefer to go to uh, third. It looked like some kind of off speed pitch that uh, Randall just kind of clanged. It wasn't uh, that tough a play. Aaron Ballsley, the pitching coach, with a quick trip. You know, while they're talking on the mound, back to your point about Danny Santana and his ability to drive in runs, uh, and get hits in big situations. I think there's a, uh, a pretty good reason for that. This young man has shown a very, very strong ability to hit pitches that are in the strike zone. He squares up the ball really pretty well, uh, consistently with balls in, in the strike zone, and when got with guys on base. Pitchers have to throw the ball over at some point in time. They, they've got to throw. They can't. They can't work on him throwing high fastballs and, and curveballs in the dirt. They've got to throw it over. And and uh, when they do, he's a Danny's an aggressive hitter. And he squares it up. Here's Dozier, first and third, two down. Popped up right field, and back is Frank Coor. And the Twins leave two more on base. It's a two to one ball game heading into the fifth. Minnesota State Lottery winner circle $100 and scratch off tickets. Mom and dad are right next to me right here, Jason and Allison. A very special special birthday boy all the way from Elk River. It's the golden birthday for Mason. Obviously, you got great seats. It's a perfect day. The twins are winning. This is something you got to be, as a dad, pretty proud of. Absolutely. Fantastic outside. Does he have a favorite player? Pretty much all of them. Well, they're all having a pretty good day. And, of course, August 6th. Sixth birthday, you think of Tony Oliva, guys, one of the all-time greats that also wore the number six. Wow. Thank you, Kevin. I thought he was going to go the other route. Here's a flare down the left field line, and that ball is foul. I thought he was going to relate it to April 6th when uh, my regular broadcast partner uh, has his uh, birthday. And is that his birthday? April 6th. You might well, not I've, have I've, heard I've, that. I've never, I, haven't, I haven't heard that before. 
Twins leading two to one fifth inning and yonder Alonzo who's really been stinging the ball in this series cracked the leadoff double in the third but only got as far as third base. One strike from Correa. Chop foul I would like to uh, clarify something uh, someone was nice enough to uh, correct me on uh, Twitter. Uh, Dave Winfield uh, is in the Hall of Fame wearing a Padre cap so Winfield and Tony Gwynn uh, both represent uh, the Padre franchise. Which still doesn't help us with the trivia question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's use Twitter for that. Somebody help us out. One and two. You know you, when we talk about franchises and Padres came into existence in 1969 I'm old enough you are too to be reminded what life was like before baseball returned to Kansas City before there was a franchise in Seattle Denver didn't get one till fairly recently you know west of the Mississippi uh, you had Los Angeles and you had the Giants in the late 50s that moved out there but there wasn't much Major League Baseball west of the Mississippi uh, until in relative terms fairly recently that's exactly right two and two off the end of the bat Escobar charges and fires on the run one away. I'll bring up Grandal. Strike out hunger at Feed My Starving Children. Pack meals at the Coon Rapids and Egan locations between now and August 31st, or the Chan Hassan location between now and September 12th. And while you're there, register for a chance to win admission for two to a Twins game and ride in style on the Fox Sports North Fan Express. Here's Grandal. Now, you grew up in Southern California, and by the time you we're old enough to listen to ball games on the radio. The Dodgers were in place, right? Oh, absolutely. Look, Vince Scully was the guy that I grew up mm -hmm. uh, listening to, and could not have been a better experience. I was a I was a Dodger fan, except for uh, except for my uh, uncle Gene Mox teams that he was managing in the, in the, from the early '60s on. One strike to Grandal and a pop up near second base. Those are calling for it. You know, one of the great franchises in baseball to this day, the St. Louis Cardinals, and uh, you know, I maintain that one of the reasons that's such a great baseball community is because that was that was the farthest west uh, a team would go. I mean, the, the major leagues went to St. Louis and stopped. To this day, you find so many. Uh, Midwest and just further uh, west than that, not all the way to the coast, but uh, that kind of middle of the country fans of the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals yeah. because those were the two teams that uh, people uh, in uh, this neck of the woods down down to Texas and, and west they could pick them up, pick up radio games at night. Liner to center, Santana coming in, a diving catch by Danny Santana. A line drive in Santana with speed and a quick start, able to make a great catch to end the inning.
kickstart fans of the game enjoying summer vacation and this will be one of the highlights going to a twins game. Trevor Plouffe will lead off the fifth. So when you were in Southern California growing up you went to what how many Dodger games a year would you go to. Went to just about all of the uh, games that the Dodgers played the Phillies or the Expos. Well, I suppose when, you uh, get free tickets. When, yeah. <laughs> Lots of teams were in town. Uh, and uh, my friends and I would go out uh, early and play. Uh, uh, we'd get rides out to the ballpark. Play wiffle ball and tennis ball in the parking lot from about three o'clock till six o'clock when they opened the uh, stands. We'd, we'd buy the first ones in line by front row at the top deck tickets behind the plate. Breaking ball tapped to third. And Plouffe thrown out one away. Tickets were about a buck, I think, or a buck and a half to, to sit up there and we we get and it was first come, first serve. So we're at the very top deck behind the plate. We'd run out, run in and get the seats right behind home plate. Had a blast. I don't know, so 15, 20 games a year, I suppose. See for me, and I grew up in the outstate in uh, Dumont, on the western part of the state. It was like one trip a year. We'd one game we could go to. So when you uh, Fox tracks presented by Jeep when you went heaven forbid if there was a forecast of rain because that was your one shot you know one strike to Vargas he's walked struck out and now a big swing on an off speed pitch. Foul back to strike Ron Gardenhire was asked this morning what Vargas might be missing by skipping triple A and he mentioned something that might indeed come into play here if it hasn't already. And Gardy's description was a triple A you're going to have a, a lot of pitchers just about everybody who can really to use his term spin the ball make it move bust it bat in a roller and Vargas will get an infield hit. He hit it where they weren't, to paraphrase Wee Willie Keeler. Didn't draw the oohs and ahs that the home run did last night. Defense pulled way around to pitch him inside, thinking he's going to pull it, and it uh, jams him and goes right in the right spot. Now, when you uh, came through the minor leagues, did you uh, make the jump from double A to the big leagues or did you spend some time in triple A? I was uh, in triple A for about a month. Or okay. Six weeks. Okay. And a lot's changed in the game since then, but it was Gardy's assessment that the biggest change uh, from a double A to triple A is maybe some guys with major league experience who are now at triple A, uh, like Scott Diamond, who, you know, learned up here you got to spin the ball and move it if you want to get hitters out and that's what um, Vargas is bypassing. No question about that in double A you're going to see guys that have uh, some guys that have big league stuff but can't throw it over consistently. The guys that can throw it over and can, and can throw breaking balls will be in triple A relatively soon. And uh, when the guys that are in triple A you have a, a mix of experienced guys that have been in the big leagues. Uh, before perhaps or are on their way there clearly on their way there you've got guys coming up from double A that that have the stuff and are trying to refine their command of their of their pitches. So in in triple A it's it's uh, a little bit more difficult because of the ability guys to, to pitch. Arcia checks his swing one and two and yet if I understood you correctly you thought the biggest uh, change or the biggest uh, leap is from A to double A. I, I really think that's that's true. Double A players uh, are all the guys that have that are on the verge. And RC strikes out two away. Seems through a, a change up there, but the double. It's not too late to join the Twin Season Ticket family this year as a partial plan holder. You still receive all the benefits of a season ticket holder for the rest of the season. Check it out at twinsbaseball.com or 1 800 33 Twin. Here's Parmalee. Just to finish that thought of double A, those guys are all on the uh, verge of getting to the uh, to the next level. Slow that big slow curveball again to uh, to Parmley for strike one, but 
it's uh, it, it's not it's no longer a ball where guys are just out of high school and they're learning how to play the game. The guys in double A have are, are close to big league ability, and then it's just a question of in, in a hitter's case, pitchers have big league type arms, and it's just a, a, a question of whether or not they have they're ever going to develop the command of breaking pitches and that kind of thing. You don't see that kind of quality, but you see the arms. And I believe you have to conquer double A before you ever ever get anywhere else. Down and in two and one. And plus in double A the conditions aren't as uh, aren't nearly as good as in triple A of course not in big leagues but those double A parks for the most part you know it's harder to see the ball guys are throwing hard they have big league fastballs but aren't throwing them over. And I think if you can hit in double A you you've got a pretty good shot at it. As meteoric as his rise was through the angel system when I asked Mike Trout that question last year he said what you said from a ball to double A was the biggest jump bigger more difficult he said than the jump from double A to the big leagues. Two and two to Parmalee. But that was Mike Trout. Well yeah you have that kind of ability it would be uh, it, it, it would be easier in the big leagues for a couple of reasons too. I mean. The, the conditions are so great in the big leagues. I mean, you see the ball well in nighttime. You see it like the daytime in, uh, in double A, for example. Check to swing three and two, and that'll allow Vargas to leave early from first. But the other thing is, when you're a hitter in the big leagues, you're coming up from double A. All of a sudden, the guys that pitch in the big leagues, they've got more consistently great stuff than you see in, in double A, but they're throwing it around the plate all the time, and they have a plan, and they execute the plan, and you can figure out the plan. In double A, Guys are just trying to find the strike zone. Well, he takes a walk and now first and second. And Escobar will come to the plate. Twins have had opportunities since Kloof's two run home run in the first. They filled the bases twice in the second inning. And runners at first and third with the two outs in the fourth. And now first and second, two gone in the fifth. Escobar with a single in the second. Ground ball to first in the fourth. Swing and a miss. Gardner said again this morning the hope to get Santana into the infield to play some at short. And that'll uh, almost certainly happen, I would imagine, when we get to uh, the West Coast in the Oakland series. There's a ball poked off the glove of Salarte. Rounding third, heading home is Vargas. And the throw not in time. Everybody moves up. And Escobar with a two out hit. Vargas scoring the third run. It's three to one. And you can like it or not like it. The rule, the new rule about whether about the lane the catcher has to give. And we'll see here a nice little job of hitting by Escobar going with that pitch on the outside corner. Solarte can't quite get to it, goes off the tip of his glove. And now big Kenny Vargas is chugging around third base. And I guarantee you that Grandal is just fine with the new rule. <laughs> And now Eric Fryer with a chance to deliver an even more damaging two out hit two runners in scoring position. With Smith's throw sailing over the cutoff man ball one. The ones were guilty of that on the road trip. A throw that. Had no chance of getting the runner Vargas but elevated over the cutoff man as a result. Both men move up a base. And now a little pop up to the right side should end the inning. Alonzo with the catch. A two out single by Escobar. Vargas scores and it's three to one.
between the Padres and the Twins. Those fans enjoying some uh, ice cream. Here's the starting uh, pitching a line so far with uh, five innings of uh, pretty good work by Correa and uh, Despagne hasn't been bad either. Both pitches have been very good and Kevin Correa in particular for five innings. We talked about that sometimes he'll have issues in the first or second inning not be able to find his uh, command but then right to ship and, and sometimes he just never seems to be able to find it today. He's been spot on. I, I think a, about as good a command with all of his pitches as I've seen him having some time. Cabrera takes ball one. It'll be Cabrera, Solarte, and Smith in the sixth. Pitch count good for Correa. As you see, this will be just his 60th. Which is an indication of command. He's, he's hitting the spots he's trying to hit four strikes. There's a great example. A little change up on the outside corner, and we, when he's struggling, we'll see both the sinker and and that change up just not able to get it on the corner. Has to come in over the middle of the plate and gets knocked around a little bit. Today, all of his pitches: fastball, cutter, change up, bigger curveball. He's been throwing them to the spots that he wants to throw. One and one. He's going to try for the outside corner with a little two seam fastball here, right there, perfect. And that's the pitch that he really needs. When he's throwing that pitch on that spot, he's really good. One and two. Breaking ball served into right field, a base hit. A little flare, a leadoff hit. First time that the Padres have had a leadoff hit since the third inning. That'll bring up Salarte. Here's a look at the AT&T fan photo of the game. You can uh, tweet a photo to hashtag North Fan Photo for a chance to be shown in a game broadcast. His first Twins game. Brought to you by AT&T. Reminiscing with my son about his first Twins game. He was about that age. And uh, sadly, it was the last game that Kirby Puckett ever played. Dennis Martinez hit him with the pitch. And my son, who was two months old at the time, has no recollection of that. You believe that? I remember my first Major you know, League game. You know, I thought this was going to be another. Um, Kirby Puckett was so great, even a two month old <laughs> story. 1 and 0 oh to Salarte. Because I would believe any any story about Kirby. What a wonderful, wonderful player and teammate he was. Salarte with a strikeout looking in the first and then a pop up to second in the fourth. 2 and 0. Oh. Mentioned that Correa pitched a couple of years for the Padres, 2009, 2010, and then I said he had a couple of Correa type years, which basically means he had about a 500 record. And a little bit of an injury issue his second year with the Padres. There's a strike in the outside corner. But for San Diego, he was 22 and 21. First year in San Diego, the first time he came really close to and only time. Pitching 100 or 200 innings, 198 innings. I don't know that Kevin's ever played pitch for a team that was, was an offensive juggernaut either. Right, three and one. Smith on deck, an important man to get here for Correa. He's got another two-run lead. Cabrera at first, nobody out. And he walked him. Correa, his first walk, coming on the heels of a leadoff single, and Smith will come up with two men aboard. Uncharacteristic there of Kevin Correa. He can struggle with his control a little bit, but usually not to the point of walking people. It's usually just his control around the strike zone. That's a pretty big walk right there for the uh, for the Padres. Really 
puts them into position to have a to get a, a rally started here. Smith 0 for 2 ground ball to Parmalee at first and then a comebacker to Correa. Correa will get the odd ground ball double play but just nine of them induced this year. Side ball one. All of a sudden, he's gotten in a little trouble, and his his mechanics have changed a little bit. We'll, we'll notice it when he start. He flies open a, a little bit on his delivery, and then he leaves the ball out away from the outside corner. Instead of hitting that outside corner by going directly at it, he flies open a little bit. Driven to right center field, and it'll one hop the wall, and it might tie the game. Cabrera will score. Solarte being held at third because there's no one out. The tying run at third. Ringing double off the bat of Seth Smith. He fell behind and paid the price. Yeah, Smith, very good hitter. Good, real good hitter against right handed pitching, especially. And he's seen a lot of pitches and, and then sees one right in the middle of the zone. And he, chances are he's not going to miss that one. Up and out over the plate. Just a perfect pitch for a good left hand hitter to tee off on it. Anderson will go to the mound here. Talked with Rick Anderson about uh, uh, about Kevin Correa's delivery when he starts. Uh, I notice he misses outside. It, it looks like he like he opens up quickly. Burt Blylevin talks about that a lot. We're talking about pitchers' uh, mechanics, and he, he opens up and falls toward first base and throws the ball back outside the outside corner. And loses loses the feel for the. Uh, the good pitches in the strike zone that he's had and Rick said yeah they're working very very hard in the bullpen of just kind of having a straight line step and, and front shoulder front hip front foot step toward the uh, spot that he's throwing to and he'll get into situations where he just kind of loses that that feel of his uh, of his mechanics and front shoulder really flies open and it's really really hard to throw the ball where you want to when that happens. Manica popped up to third in the second. Delivered a two out single in the fourth and then scored on Jerko's double for the first Padre run. And he falls behind 1 and 0. Oh. Correa finding himself in the middle of one of those innings now where things can uh, unravel in a hurry if he's not careful. Fouled away one and one. This one much, much better. That pitch uh, right there, much more at the uh, at the target with his body. But on the ball that he delivered uh, to Seth Smith, his front side will will open really, really early and and, uh, and he falls. You see, whenever he has to catch himself with that right foot coming over. That far toward first base, you know that he's opened up a little quickly. One and one. Bouncer to third, and Plouffe will think about coming home and then fight her to first. And the runner, Salarte, slid over the bat, and now he's hurt at home plate. The game is tied. Plouffe looked like he was ready to pull the trigger on a throw home, decided against that, and then Salarte. Going into a slide appeared to slide right over the bat. We are tied at three. Smith holding it second, one away. You see Salarte here, the bat right in his way, and he lands on it with the it looks like his knee and upper thigh there. Yeah, the knob of the bat just uh, hammering into his upper thigh. Twins got it out, conceded the tying run, and now Jet Jerko. I'm not, excuse me, I'm not really sure why that run was conceded. I, it, Trevor looked like he had a had time to throw home. I don't know if he didn't have a good grip on the ball, or by the time he did grip it, the, he looked like the runner was in the way. I couldn't I couldn't really tell, but I think the play was to home there if he had any kind of chance. Check swing. No swing. Ball one.
Jerko drove in the first run with a double in the fourth. One and zero. Oh. Inside, and as the Padres have rallied here in the sixth. First pitch strikes have disappeared for Correa. He's fallen behind everybody, it seems, this inning. Three and oh, first base open, but only one out. And you see how he just there's two pitches ago where that front side goes more toward the uh, first base line and, and that invariable invariably will leave your arm dragging and that's why the ball was sailed inside so far inside the right hand. Hit it. The left field. And the catch made by Schaefer two down. And that'll bring up Will Venable. Now on FoxSportsNorth.com, view a photo gallery from the two-game series against the Padres. And check back later for Tyler Mason's post-game analysis and quotes from the locker room. Two down, go-ahead runner still at third, and here's Will Venable. Rangers with a couple of early leads against Chris Sale. Twins jumped on sale for a five run inning. Now Texas with a couple of runs, a Ranger lineup, not what it has been in years past. And there's another first pitch ball. White Sox giving up some big run games to the Twins and Rangers last night. Their team ERA has dropped below the Twins now. Check swing and a called strike. Twins, Twins team RA ERA at 4.34 White Sox 4.39 Houston just a one one hundredth of an earned run uh, better than the Twins at 4.33. Saw a graphic a minute ago that the guys in the truck showed us 20 pitches this inning for Correa only nine of them strikes and that's that is not not only not going to get it done but that's Reverse uh, from what he's been, he did the first five innings where he was pounding the strike zone pretty well. Started the inning with the low pitch count, you couldn't help but think, at least I could, thinking, hey, you've got a chance maybe for a complete game, but now all sorts of trouble here in the sixth and bullpen activity as he's wobbling his way through the top of the sixth inning. Or do you, have you watched enough baseball, you don't even think complete game anymore for a starting <laughs> pitch? I, I still think I, there's a I, chance. I don't think much about the complete game. I, I don't think about that being even an issue. Foul back one and two. I've just been conditioned to think in those terms because of who I normally work with. Twins have two complete games this year, one of them a loss by an Alaska. Kansas City Royals don't have a complete game yet. Seattle Mariners with Iwakuma and Felix Hernandez have won. One and two to Will Venable. Two and two. Well, there's two things that contribute to uh, that lack of complete game, lack of pitchers pitching into the eighth and ninth uh, very often. One is they're very, very, just organizationally across baseball, they're, they're protective of pitchers' arms. They just don't, they are on a pitch count. As much as Burt doesn't want to hear it, they just, they just are. I'm not disagreeing with Burke at, at all, but that's just the way it is. Slow breaking ball, got the corner. The inning starts single walk, double it ends, ground out, fly out, strike out. Couple for the Padres, and they've tied the game at three.
is presented by Toyota. The annual clearance event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. And by McDonald's, where right now you can score a delicious, creamy McDuffet iced coffee starting at just $1.59. 3-3 game. We'll go to the bottom of the six. Jordan Schaefer leads it off. Let's get to know him with three things about him. He's, of course, the left-handed batter and fielder out of Indiana. He'll pop this one up. Easy play over at first. Of course, the first up. But, guys, let's uh, let's get to know him a little beyond the baseball diamond. His favorite baseball player is Ken Griffey Jr. Had a chance to go to his baseball camp when he was a kid. Fell in love with the player and uh, tries to emulate some of his speed out in the field. His favorite movie is Cool Runnings. Disney production about the uh, bobsled team and his favorite performer, Justin Timberlake loves the movies, loves the Saturday Night Live bit, and obviously the music. And Roy, I think uh, after this last road trip, you're uh, now workout buddies with JT. <laughs> kind of fun. We got to uh, be in the workout room in Kansas City with Justin Timberlake and uh, Jessica Beale. I didn't care a whole lot about Justin Timberlake being there, but. Uh, <laughs> you noticed his wife. Uh, <laughs> Here's Santana, one down. Well, on the field, one thing I think we've learned about Jordan Schaefer, he likes to swing at the first pitch. He did it in his uh, base hit uh, last night. Uh, tried to bunt on the first pitch earlier today, popped up in this at bat, and now one and two to Danny Santana. 0 for 1, he's hit by a pitch and walked. Get him again. Got him again. A pitch down and in, and Santana's legs, his greatest asset, are taking a beating here today. First one got him in the knee. This one right, right off the toe. Yeah. A, that, uh, hard slider trying to. And again, when we talk about back foot sliders, that's you're not aiming <laughs> specifically for it. Dozier. See if Santana feels uh, quick enough, fast enough to think about stealing here. Not on the first pitch, and Dozier takes strike one. Dozier's left five men on in his last two at bats. Hit a squibber off of the end of his bat. Came up in the second inning with the bases loaded and one out. And Alonzo made a nice play getting a force out at home. And then hit a fly ball to right with runners at first and third and two down in the fourth. One and one. Santana bluffing a, uh, a steal there. Don't know if that was a uh, if it was a bluff. It was a really good one. Don't know if it was a bluff or he started to go and decided to pull up. I think I think Danny's got it in his mind to go. Alex Torres, the only left-handed reliever the Padres have, is warming up. Vincent alongside him in left center field. Guardy's got it in his mind for Santana to go too. We saw the stopwatch there. You don't see a whole lot of managers with the stopwatch. I think that's pretty cute. I, uh, you know, usually you have uh, somebody like uh, Molitor or one of the bench coaches. Guardy wants to know exactly himself. He wants to know just how fast uh, El Duque number two here is uh, Despania is uh, getting to the plate. Generally speaking, if from the time of the first move of the pitcher till the time the ball hits the glove of the catcher, if it's more than 1.5 seconds, they'll go with the speed of the ball. Santana and it goes on the ball, popped up down the left field line. And the ball dropped by Smith, who played it perfectly. He went to the wall, ran along the wall with the wind blowing it back toward home plate. And he played it well, but didn't catch it. Well, this is really a good job. He takes a peek at the wall and then starts running along the wall. Very nice. So the ball hit him in a bad spot there. Right in the palm. Bang. Two and two now to Dozier. Santana was off on that pitch. So whether he takes off here.
So far, the Spaniard not too quick to first base, a little slow to the plate unless he unless he quick kind of quick pitches it. But Twins have found him good to run on. Danny stumbled there. He's off with that delivery to the plate and stumbled on it out of the gate. And had to pull up. Those are waves at strike three, and now Plouffe. Plouffe with a two-run home run in the first. Fly ball to left in the second, and a ground ball to third in the fifth. You can see the big hole in the ground out there, right where uh, Danny's left foot just just off off of his uh, right foot there. As he started to uh, cross over to go to second, his, his drive foot, his right foot kind of stumbled and dug in and didn't get a good push off. So he had to he had to pull up. Flip foul down the right field line. Plus two run home run brought his total for the year. Runs batted into 50. He drove in 52 last year, 55 the year before that, so he's approaching a career high. Generally speaking, when you're talking about a base stealer in a base stealer situation, the manager, he has a green light, and the manager will put a hold on it. There he goes, Danny. And another steal. The ball rolling near the outfield grass. Twins have done some running here with the three steals so far against. Despagna and uh, Grandal. Yeah, and you see that he's just a little slow to the plate for Danny's kind of speed, for Jordan Schaefer's speed. They're stealing relatively easily. See Santana's beautiful gate there, nice and low to the ground. He, he runs faster low to the ground than anybody I've seen since Rod Peru. Down the left field line, Plouffe delivers. He'll score Santana with ease. The ball rolls by Smith. And that'll allow Plouffe to go to second base. So another big two out hit. Twins got one from Escobar in the fifth, and now one from Plouffe here in the sixth. And now a semi hanging breaking ball again that Trevor hits for a double. He got the hanger for his home run in the first inning. Despagne did it again, tries to come from the side and let, the, let that spinner just spin right over the middle. Trevor sees it, stays back just long, long enough, and drives it down the left field line. Scoring Santana. Smith kind of boxed it up out in left field, and Trevor was able to get to second base. So he'll get a single with an RBI, takes second on the error by the left fielder. Danny Santana getting another run with his legs. And the Twins have regained the lead in the bottom of the sixth. Danny Santana about something. Yeah, I'm sure he's talking uh, with them about how they go about deciding when uh, Santana's going to run. For the most part, 
when Santana's on there, he's got the green light to steal if he can get a jump, unless Gardy uh, on a particular pitch tells him no. And uh, they'll have a sign. They won't give him the steal sign every pitch. The steal is on, but what they'll give him is a is a don't go sign. And the reason that Gardy will do that is if he's got a, a sense about the other manager pitching out in a certain count, or if he's got a sense about the hitter and a real good hitter's count that he doesn't want that he wants the hitter to be able to go ahead and, and swing, he'll give him the, the hold sign on the steal. But other than that, for the most part, I think Danny's probably pretty much able to steal without having to get a specific steal sign. Alex Torres in to pitch for the Padres. Vargas will switch and hit from the right side now. He takes up an in ball one. Torres again, the only left handed reliever the Padres are carrying. Vargas on the day, a walk, a strikeout, a single, and a run scored. Big swing and a miss. I asked Vargas about his switch hitting history. He said he started about a month before the Twins signed him. A natural right handed batter who gets more opportunity from the left side because there are more right handed pitchers than left handed, but he told me he considers himself to be just as good from both sides of the plate. Ooh, hacked foul nearly got Rick Anderson. I think you can tell from Torres uh, that he is the only pitcher that we've seen that wears the protected the protective cap. It's uh, obviously uh, recommended now for pitchers to use it, but very few pitchers have even tried it, and Torres has it on. One and two. Chopper left side. Head high hop for Cabrera. And Vargas retired, but the Twins regain the lead. And have a 4 3 lead as we go to the seventh. The Twins wasted no time in the first inning. Trevor Plouffe with a two-run shot into the left field seats. In the fourth, the Padres would come back. Jed Jorko doubled down the right field line, and it would be two to one. Eduardo Escobar singled in the, uh, the in, singled in Kenny Vargas to get the third run, and then Seth Smith hit a ring and double to right center to drive in one, made it three to two. Tommy Medica with a ground ball to third. Trevor couldn't go home to get the tying run. And that made it 3-3, three to three, but then Trevor Plouffe just this past inning, the bottom of the sixth, drove in Danny Santana, who had stolen second base for the uh, go-ahead run, and that's where we are here at the top of the seventh, Twins 4-3. to three. Yonder Alonzo will face Brian Dunsing. And as we talked to a number of times today about a typical Kevin Correa 
season or a typical Kevin Correa outing, this has been it. Quality start, three earned runs, six innings, but now he's out. The Twins bullpen will try to take it from here. 1 0 oh to Alonzo, then Grandal and Francoeur. See the numbers very good for Alonzo. Four hits, six at bats, and now a fifth hit. Sharp single to lead off the seventh. Matt Pomerantz and I were talking about Alonzo a little bit in the, in the uh, third inning. He came in here hitting about 217, and he has looked like Anything but a 217 hitter. He's having good swings and everything that gets thrown up there. Former twin Rene Rivera will hit for Yasmani Grandal. Rivera having a nice year for the Padres. Eight home runs, 28 RBIs. They really like the way he brings his defensive skills behind the plate. Catching a pretty good pitching staff. Grandal was 0 for 2. Missing inside ball one. Padres fell behind 2 to nothing. Got to 2 to 1, then 3 to 1 Twins. They tied it at 3. Now a leadoff single with the Twins up 4 3. And like another left-hander before him last night at Caleb Thielbar, a very, very important inning for Brian Dunsing in terms of the the way the game is uh, going to be uh, played out here in these last three innings. You mentioned Kevin Gray went six. Now it's up to the bullpen. And if your manager Ron Gardenhire, you're thinking about Glenn Perkins in the ninth, and how do you get to him if the game remains close in, in a safe type situation? How do you get to uh, Glenn Perkins in the ninth? So. Dunsing in the seventh, he'll match up left handers and right handers with, with Dunsing, try to get to the eighth inning. Figure how it, who's going to pitch the eighth in order to get to Perkins in the ninth. Casey Fiend, the normal uh, setup man, eighth inning uh, pitcher, pitched uh, the eighth last night. Don't know if he would be available to pitch the eighth. Now, but we're looking at a combination of Dunsing, Burton, probably in the seventh. Mm -hmm. Maybe Ryan Presley getting through the uh, seventh and uh, into the eighth inning. But it all sets up for the manager working back, working uh, backwards as you see Jared Burton up in the in the pen. And these, these are the matchups that uh, manager Ron Gardenhire is thinking about as he looks through the lineup, who's coming up for the Padres and who's the best uh, option that he's got. Left hander or right handed pitcher against whoever Bud Black sends up there. Missing outside three and one. Rivera with 175 at bats this year. He came into this year having spent parts of three years with the Mariners, one year with the Twins, and last year with the Padres with a total of 321 at bats. So he's enjoying a lot of playing time this year. Lifts it foul. Three and two. Going back to managing the ball game a little bit. If you're Ron Gardenhire and you're thinking about the seventh inning, you look at the lineup coming up and left hand hitting Alonzo is up first, left hand hitting uh, Grandal was next. He would figure if he brought in the left hander that uh, Rivera would, would hit for Grandal, but. If Dunsing can get the left hander out to start the inning, then he's okay with Dunsing pitching the right handers with nobody on. Harmony will watch it spin back into the seats. Now, with uh, Dunsing unable to get the left hander out to lead off the inning, and right handers coming up, Rivera, the pinch hitter, Francoeur, uh, the neck ninth hitter, Cabrera, the switch hitter. Uh, so Larte the switch hitter those those are the guys that he's got coming up so he felt compelled to get the right hander up Burton up in case the innings the right hand hitter start uh, doing some damage against left hander Benson. Another three two to Rene Rivera. Rivera played in the Twins organization in 2011 and 2012. Got to the big league club in 2011 hit 144 and 104 at bats. Three and two. 
walked him. So the seventh inning starts as the sixth inning started. A single followed by a walk. And Jeff Francoeur being called back to the dugout. Ron Gardenhire come out and change pitchers with a disappointing seventh inning start by Brian Dunsing. Tying run at second, nobody out with the Padres threatening to come back on the Twins yet again. Got Frank Coor out of the game. Clinging on to a 4 3 lead. And it'll be Alexei Amarista who will hit instead against Jared Burton. Look at Jared Burton's numbers uh, on the year. Kind of uh, tale of two seasons. Uh, struggled early. He's been, has pitched much better since. Well, ran into a little trouble on the uh, recently on the road trip, but he's the uh, he and Ryan Presley, the right-handed uh, guys in the uh, seventh and uh, early eighth inning, along with uh, Dunsing and Fieldbar as the left-handed options, trying to get to Casey Feen and then Glenn Perkins so the way it sets up in the bullpen. A very good bunter. I don't know whether he's going to be asked to do that here. First and second, nobody out. Bloof in on the grass. I can't imagine that he would not be bunting. Okay. Up and away, pick off to second, and they got him. Alonzo picked off second base by Eric Fryer. A wonderful, wonderful play by Eric Fryer behind the plate and a huge mistake by Alonzo. You see here, not even close to being bunted at, and Alonzo taking a big, big secondary lead. You see him jumping off of there quite a bit. Fryer comes up throwing. Escobar puts the tag on him. Very, very nice. That play usually happens when a strike is thrown and the bunter bunts through the ball when it looks like he cut, he's really coming close to making contact. And then you're out there at second base and it looks like, gosh, he's got to be making contact with the ball. You start to break. Somehow he misses it. And, and that's a tough play for a runner on second base. That one right there is almost like a pitch out. He didn't even offer at it. Well, and I wanted to ask you the way everyone reacted, Fryer and Escobar. Here's the ball hit to right. Right at Archie out number two. Could, is that a play that could have been called at the pitching change? I mean, is that an intentional setup play by any chance? Because Escobar was at second base waiting for the throw, and it almost looked like it was the 
similar type of play to the one that picked off Darrell Evans in, in the playoffs. It acts it absolutely could have been and, and I, I wondered about that myself when I saw how quickly Fryer came f f uh, firing out right. of there because it, it wasn't like he just happened to uh, see Alonzo jump off there a little far. He was coming out of there almost like it was a pitch out. It was not a pitch out but acted like that uh, because the ball was away and he came he came firing right out of there. Back to the mound and out of that rally Jared Burton gets the twins off the field quickly. Thanks largely to the pickoff. Of the runner at second by Eric Fryer. Four to three. This top copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Minnesota Twins LLC. Now you'll be out on the lakes enjoying the summertime. You're wrapping up your uh, game broadcast uh, schedule today. Right? I am. I am. Jack Morris will be on the road trip. And so uh, let me again uh, thank you for um, uh, your uh, expertise and your professionalism and and the fun we've had together. Well, been thanks. a good couple of weeks. Thanks so much. Been a great couple of weeks. Actually, uh, quite a bit of uh, games done with you. Quite a few, and it's been a blast. Here's Oswaldo Arcia taking strike one against Torres. When somehow got out of the seventh inning with a one run lead. We'll see if they can add more to that. And strike two called. I just can't get over that mistake by uh, Alonzo getting picked off there, taking the uh, taking the Padres out of that inning. It's just just a cardinal sin. You cannot you cannot do that, especially on the road trying to come back. But I remember that happened. Uh, uh, was it Game Six, the '87 the World Series? Kent Herbeck got picked off of uh, second base. Or it might have been the '91 World Series, but I mean it can happen to the most experienced of players. One and two. And we'll have to ask uh, Ron Gardner whether that was a setup play. Ball flipped foul. And I referenced the Darrell Evans pickoff at third base. That was set up. That was absolutely set up. There's Rene Rivera. He'll finish the game as a catcher. Tim Laudner, the catcher. He can maybe talk about that on the postgame show about whether a play like that can be uh, talked about on the mound with the pitching change. Okay, we're going to do this. And Here's where the pitch is going to be. You do this, and we'll see if we can catch somebody napping. Well, I think what generally happens uh, right there is they're they're trying to throw a strike and let the uh, guy bunt the ball, not trying to throw a, a 
a ball or a semi pitch out there. But I think when you're on the mound and, and you know if I'm playing shortstop and Tim Lodner is behind the plate, you know one or, or both of us would say to each other, let's just be alive. Timmy would say to me, if this if it's a ball and the guy bunts through it, I'm I'm not afraid of coming down right. there. And we'd be aware of it. I know in the case of Daryl Evans, there was a sign between Tim Laudner and Gary Gaetti, and I, I, Timmy will maybe uh, regale us with the story, but I think it was grabbing some dirt in the bare hand and throwing it uh, uh, from the crouching position. And that was the cue to Gaetti, who then cued the third base umpire, uh, I think it was Joe Brinkman, and said, Okay, ready, be ready. So everybody was on their toes except the veteran <laughs> Daryl Evans, who got picked off. It was just the last thing in Daryl Evans' mind. You could tell that, and it was a, it was a great and gutsy call by Timmy, uh, and a perfect throw, good tag, I and mean, everything about it was terrific. And now RC ends up taking a leadoff walk here in the seventh inning. Sanford Health injury report involving Nick Punto, sprained his right hamstring the other day. He will not be playing against the Twins when we get out there. Boy, Nicky's had a lot of hamstring injuries yep. in his career. Lester's hamstrings are fine. So are Casimir's, some arches. Yeah, nothing to it. <laughs> Hamill to have a, probably Hamill needs to have a couple of good starts in a row here to keep his spot in the rotation. Remember the A's trading Tommy Malone to the Twins because they felt they had their rotation set, but Hamill struggled a little bit. Harmony takes outside ball one. It's back to that uh, pickoff play in Detroit in uh, 87. I, I just can't stress enough what the, the uh, courage that took to put that play on such a huge situation. And Timmy had feeling absolutely confident that he could throw a strike down there and not throw the ball into left field or something. And it's the it's to get into the World Series, right? And it's a right. huge situation. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't look good. And you know, a couple of real professional guys there, Tim Laudner and Gary Gaetti, pulling off the biggest play of that, other than the Twins offense, the biggest play of the uh, that Detroit series. One and one to Parmalee. Arcia with a very conservative lead at first. Popped up. Wide of third, Salarte near the dugout and the ball being pushed back by the wind and into the dugout. Torres, actually the pitcher, the closest man to it. Wind blowing in from center field, and a couple of times now the ball has been pushed farther into foul territory because of it. Great effort by the pitcher right there. Catcher protecting him. Grabbing him so he wouldn't fall over into the end of the dugout. That's that's some real hustle and an idea about athleticism from uh, Torres. I mean, he, he ran over there like he was dead serious about catching that ball, which means, in, at least in this case, this pitcher is a pretty good athlete. <laughs> One and two to Parmalee. Twins trying to take advantage of a leadoff walk here in the seventh. Chopper back to Torres, firing to second, stepping on the bag and completing a double play. Nice footwork by Everth Cabrera as he caught the ball, found the bag, and delivered uh, the throw to first for the double play. Well, nice footwork and nice ability to catch a rough throw that was an absolute P thrown to him by Torres. You see the ball bounces back to Torres. He has to set himself. Now he throws a rocket and Cabrera has to catch a rocket throw just as he's getting to the base. So watch this. He'll catch it and step on the bag almost simultaneously. Avoid the runner and have enough on the throw to get Parmley. That's a terrific play by the shortstop. Escobar popping one foul into the seats. Escobar with a couple of hits and an awfully big one in the fifth inning. Two out single. That uh, drove in Vargas with the third run. This one hooked wickedly foul. 
two strikes. In the dirt. One of two. What do you think of that cat? Do you think it will catch on? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't blame Torres or any pitcher for wearing it. There's some wicked shots that come back through the box from major league hitters, and I, I don't, uh, wouldn't blame anybody for wearing it. I just, I just don't know that's going to catch on. Check your swing. I agree. And the Twins send just three men to the plate in the seventh. this update after this brief homestand wraps up with the two games against the Padres the Twins hit the road and will open a four game series against the American League West Division leading Oakland Athletics you can catch it on Fox Sports North Thursday night 830 for Twins Live presented by CenturyLink and the series starts at 9 o'clock first to four with the Athletics tomorrow night on Fox Sports North we would anticipate shouldn't we uh, low scoring games out there Seems like even when the A's haven't had an outstanding uh, pitching staff, the games are pretty quickly played, low scoring. Jared Burton did a great job weaving the Twins uh, out of that mess in the seventh inning. Eric Fryer with a big pickoff of a runner at second. Now, Salarte will lead things off in the eighth. And Burton was able to get three outs on four pitches, so sensibly he's ready to go here through the eighth inning, and then that would leave the ninth for Perkins. At least that's the plan. That would be the plan. Foul back, one and one. After today's game, the Twins will have 50 games left. And the challenge will be, as we've said a number of times, try to put together a winning August, and back it up with a winning September, and. Gain a little traction for what you hope will be a much better 2015. Schaefer with the catch on the way. Twins fans, if you need to replace those old flip flops that you've been wearing all summer, the Twins can help. Be among the first 10,000 fans at the game Wednesday, August 20th. The Twins will be taking on the Indians. And it's fan flip flop night presented by the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel. Call 833 Twins or visit twinsbaseball.com to get your tickets. Seth Smith drove in a run with a double. Another run scored in the next at bat, and the Padres had it tied at three. 1 0. 
Fox Trash presented by Carrier. Speed pitch up 2 0. Oh. Talked about it last night. Padres find themselves in a tough situation. The Dodgers leading the Giants by two and a half games. Both teams very, very good. The Giants aren't the team they were when they swept the Twins earlier this year in San Francisco, two and one. But I think the same is true of the American League West. You've got Oakland. They've done it their way. The Angels finally have their act together after spending an awful lot of money. Old foul. Mariners spent a lot of money on principally Robinson Cano. So if in fact there's been a power shift in baseball from the East Coast to the West Coast, probably not a coincidence that that's where the money's been spent. The Dodgers just opened up everybody's checkbook and spent money left, right, north, south. The Angels have done that. Mariners tried to join in the spending spree. Well, they signed Felix Hernandez as well. He wasn't a free right. agent, but they, yeah. they opened up. They, they spent a lot of money on, on Hernandez and Cano. That's for sure. Three and two. And then standing above the fray, although marginally, the Oakland A's who are spending more money this year than they have, and they've kind of. Change their business plan a little bit with some trades. There's a walk. Put Smith aboard and bring up Medica. Medica with a single, a run scored, and a run batted in. Been kind of an odd day for Bud Black. Technical malfunction in the clubhouse. They didn't have the replay capability. Go flying out on a 3 0 pitch. The biggest run, the one on the bottom. Alonzo getting picked off second base. Over, strike one. Tommy Medica is a good looking hitter. He's been really, really hot uh, coming into the series. He hasn't really done much in uh, these two games. I think he might. I, I remember uh, one base hit. Got a base hit in the uh, fourth inning today. Ground ball through the hole on the left side. Other than that, not a lot, but good looking young, young hitter nonetheless. To right center field and down for a hit. Padres again have the tying run at second base. Medica with a blue pit and Jed Jerko will come up with the tying run at second and one down. Well, not exactly a ring and line drive. He got a little uh, looks like a slider in the middle of the plate and just kind of flared it in the right center. Falls in front of Danny Santana. Jerko with an RBI double in the four. Down low ball one. Padre organization very fluid. Report. AJ Preller is about to be named their general manager. Another front office type leaving the organization today, 2 0. VP and assistant GM Chad McDonald has announced he's leaving the Padre organization. The players are oblivious to all that. They're just out there playing baseball, right? They don't care too much about that. Presley warming up. Quackenbush warming up. You know, the truth is they don't. They're just out there playing ball for the most part. It's, you know, everybody's got a job to do in an organization. And the GM and front office staff, whoever it is, has their job. When the players think about it in the uh, off season or 
in between uh, games than wanting the club to go in the right direction. As Jordan takes a little slider strike, but you know, obviously they want they want help. They want an idea that the strategy is going to work. They, they want, they're moving in the right direction. Players want to win. They, they, they're not just out there for themselves. For the most part, they want they want to win games, and that's a function of getting of getting players. But for the most part, the players go out there on the field just playing the game. Burton reaches back for 92 and blows a fastball by Jerko. Two and two. Venable on deck. Three and two. Smith was starting his secondary lead toward third, but no middle infielder around to take a pickoff throw. Popped up, infield fly rule should be called, and is. So Jerko retired, two down, and that'll bring up Venable. Meeting on the mound, everybody coming to the hill. Talk over Venable. Rick Anderson's going to join the conversation. Venable, another guy that's been swinging the bat very well for the Padres and has swung the bat well in this two game series against the Twins. So, Rick Anderson wants to be very clear with uh, Burton and Fryer how they're going to go about getting this guy out, what pitches they're going to use, where they're gonna, what location they want to try to use. Carsoup.com trivia question. The answer has to be Randy. I'll, go with, had, I'll go with Randy. We've had it. two yeah. pitching related questions. Regarding the Padres and Randy Jones has got to be the answer to at least one of them, and he is. Just under 100 losses, just or just under 100 wins, right. and just over 100 losses. Yeah, what did he win? 97 or 98, mm. I think. Two down, two on, and Venable, 0 for three today. Swings at one in the dirt, and Fryer gets enough of it to keep the runners at first and second. So much of the time you can see what the conversation on the mound has been about by what the first pitch to the hitter is. Here's a uh, the that change up fork ball splitter change that uh, Burton throws so effectively a great block again by Eric Fryer. But obviously the conversation on the mound first ball fastball type hitter. So don't throw him something there right you know a good strike to hit because he's going to be ready for the fastball. They went with the. Uh, with that uh, splitter change, and uh, they were right about it. Venable definitely on the fastball speed first pitch. One and one. And missing inside, two and one. Yeah, they missed by months. And the change again. And Burton likes to call it a changeup, doesn't he? he throws yeah, it's it, like he, a circle he, change, yeah, but it serve. drops and straight down. It goes down like a splitter and has. And, and he throws it so hard, 86, 87 miles an hour. That's not. That's a pretty good changeup. So it's coming again. Pounded foul, two and two. Padres got a leadoff double in the third, didn't score. And that threat in the sixth. With runners uh, on first and second, and uh, nobody out. Had a runner picked off. Did score a couple runs at it, and that was in the seventh inning. The pickoff, first and second. Paul, third strike. Burton strikes out Venable on a pitch that might have been off the plate, and the Padres have another rally slip through their fingers.
Monday after the game for Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink. We're going to break down the offense provided by Trevor Plouffe. He powered up the team today with three RBIs. We'll show you how he did that. Defense has made a difference in this game, and the Twins have had a decided edge. We'll take you all the way through that. We'll also bring you inside the clubhouse to Ron Gardenier's office. Here from the managers, the Twins look for their fourth one in a row, guys. All right, thank you very much, Kev. One for three for Eric Fryer and an outstanding pickoff. Some nice blocks behind the plate, or at least one last inning when uh, Padres had a couple runners on. 1 and 0 oh to Fryer. He'll be followed by Schaefer and Santana. 2 and 0. Oh. I mean, Fryer's had a very, very nice game uh, defensively, has made some nice blocks. The pickoff, of course, and I, th I thought he guided uh, Kevin Correa very well through uh, six innings. Calling pitches. And a strike. Three and one. Eric the other day graduate from Reynoldsburg High School in Ohio. Here's the ball lifted to right, retreating as the right fielder. That ball hits the warning track and then off the wall for a double. And Fryer opens the eighth inning with a leadoff double to right. Well struck ball here. Ball out over the plate. Doesn't try to pull it. Goes with it. Barrels it up as they say and drives it over the head and a one hops the uh, wall over Venable's head. Fryer's got a leadoff double. Now we'll see if newcomer Jordan Schaefer can get him over to third. Tried to bunt in the second inning and ended up bunting it into himself for an out. Corner infielders up. You've already mentioned Dick how uh, effective Danny Santana has been with runners on in, in scoring position this year. Very important to get this run right here. Get him to third. And that got Rivera. Foul ball one strike. Just to finish the note on Eric Fryer he's from Reynoldsburg High School in Ohio. And it's the same high school that produced Mike Matheny outstanding catcher and now St. Louis Cardinal manager. Graduating class of around 300, but two major league catchers coming out of that high school program. One strike to Schaefer. In the air, foul, two strikes. The ninth, hoping for another run or two to work with. You know, if there's anything at all that a player new to an organization, new to a team, wants to be able to do, is impress his manager and his new teammates with good fundamental baseball. Right. And that would have accomplished the same thing as a bunt if he'd have grounded it to the right side. Where Alonzo's playing, if it's hit sharply to him, he may be tempted to throw across the diamond and get the out. Right, but at least he's starting the ball toward the right side. Right. That's, that's all you can do. And, you know, the first two bunts in, in Schaefer's position, he really wanted to get one of those bunts down. Just prove, you know, show the other team that he's, that his new team, that he's, he's fundamentally sound. But now he's got a battle on his hand. Off the plate, one and two. Schaefer from Indiana. He's got his 28th birthday coming up in four weeks. 
trying to pull the ball against a, by a left hander against a left hander makes him so vulnerable to off speed stuff and breaking balls away. Snapped his bat. And a one hand pickup or one hot pickup rather by Solarte one down. And we'll bring up Santana RBI baseball is back all 30 teams and 2014 players get the retro two button style baseball game you've been missing. Visit rbigame.com for more details and download today on your console and mobile devices. Santana doesn't have a hit but he's been hit twice he's also walked. Hitting as a right handed batter for the first time today. Chop foul one strike. Twins have one more interleague series left. And it's the last home series of the year here against the Arizona Diamondbacks. A high drive to left field. And going back is Smith short of the track. Santana lifting one to left field for out number two. And that'll bring up Brian Dozier. Bring out Bud Black. Torres facing seven men and retiring five of them. And we'll take a break with two gone and a man in second in the eighth inning. For Brian Dozier, hoping to come through for the Twins here in the eighth inning. Nick Vincent will come in with the job of getting Brian Dozier out. Vincent coming in, he's uh, had a good opponent batting average. Try to get Dozier here. Dozier singled and scored on Blue's home run in the first. Then he uh, came up with the bases loaded and one out in the second. Reached on a fielder's choice. No RBI there. In the fourth inning, first and third, two down. He hit a fly ball to right. No RBI there. And in the sixth inning, Santana was hit by a pitch, stole second. And Dozier struck out, although Dozier struck out before Santana actually stole second base. Foul back. Probably the most important statistic for Vincent, at least in this particular situation, is that he has a 96% success rate in not allowing 
He inherited runners to score. He's, he's on a streak right here where he's stranded 25 of the 26 runners he's inherited. That's outstanding. That's really, really good. And he's uh, inherited a guy in scoring position here. There's a big, big run for the Twins to get. Last two runs have been scored on two out hits. Very high. Escobar delivered a two out single in the fifth. That scored Vargas. And in the sixth, Plouffe with an RBI single. Two out. And that scored Santana. And Perkins hoping one run uh, will be enough. Let's see who he will face. Bottom third of the lineup. Dozier cuts through a breaking pitch, one and two. That's in the high fastball zone that uh, Brian Dozier likes so much, especially uh, up and in the middle of the middle of the strike zone. Looked like a fastball, just kept cutting away from him, and Brian, uh, Brian unable to unable to barrel it up. But that's a pitch he likes up there for. That's his home run power. Same pitch, same result, and the Twins leave Fryer at second base. Can't do anything with his leadoff double. That'll be a four-three lead for Glenn Perkins. It's a one run lead for the Twins, and if you remember going back to the first inning, Brian Dozier looked like he was out trying to steal second. Padres didn't have their replay capability, so Trevor Plouffe's home run was a two run home run rather than a solo home run, and that run may turn out to be the difference in the game. Glenn Perkins hopes it is. He's looking to pick up a save in his fifth straight appearance and 29th save of the year. Alonzo and Rivera. The first two batters he'll face. Alonzo with a great series going. Six hits. A drive to left center field. Santana running back toward the gap. It's over his head. High off the wall. Back over Santana. He fumbles it. And yonder Alonzo with a great series. Seven hits in two games and one pitch into the outing. The Padres get the tying run at second. Well, once again, following a pattern we've seen with hitters against Glenn Perkins jumping on the first fastball they see. It's a round baseball now, as good as a uh, fastball as Glenn Perkins has. He likes to get ahead with it, likes to throw it early in the count, and the hitters are not wasting any time. They're they're jumping on it. Rivera with Nelson in the on deck circle. Fastball, ball one. 
Gene Perkins have some outings like this, and he's managed to collect saves through it all. Gave up a couple of hits last night to the Padres. Inside 2 0. Picked up a save against the White Sox a week ago Sunday. First three batters reached, two hits on a walk, bases were loaded, and then he got the next three guys. Popped up right side and pushed back into the seats. Two and one. Each team with so many scoring opportunities. The Padres get a quick one again here in the ninth. Foul back two and two. Rivera ended up walking in the seventh inning. You're right about scoring opportunities, Dick. Most of the time in one run games, as you can see, a four to three game in the ninth, we have a lot of guys left on base. The Twins with 10, lots of opportunities. Well, three and two. Rivera, 175 at bats. The walk he took in the seventh inning, just his 15th walk of the year. Now Perkins has run the count full. First and second, nobody out. And I believe they've all been fastballs here, haven't they? I have not seen a breaking ball. Um, Amarista will hit. Century Link link to what's next. Johan Pino going against John Lester in the opening game of a four game series, and we'll have coverage beginning at 8 30. Ended up lining out to right after failing in a bunt attempt, and now you'll be asked to do it again. Ball one. And Perkins checking there with Trevor Plouffe about just exactly what kind of bunt play is is on. And where everybody's going to be. There's a beautiful bunt. Perkins has to hurry. Fires a rocket to Parmalee to get the out. One down. Tying run at third. Go ahead, run at second. That was a beautiful bunt. Amarista failed in his seventh inning bunt attempt, but that was perfect. And a terrific play by Glenn Perkins. He's the only one that has a chance. Fields the ball backhanded, barehanded, and throws a seed over there to. Chris Parmley at first base to get the speedy Amarista. Really terrific bunt and the defense play was its equal. Very, very good. We're going to play the infield in here. Cabrera singled against Perkins last night in the ninth inning. Swing and a miss. Breaking pitch. Getting a foul ball, one strike. First breaking ball that we've that we've seen. Perkins having a little trouble with command of his fastball, but that was that was a good breaking ball there. Cabrera swung over the top of it. That that will calm the hitter down a little bit against the fastball too. The slider of that capability. Now the shortstop Cabrera has moved back to about halfway. I was going to be surprised if they played the infield all the way in. Another slider, another swing and a miss. Last night Perkins gave up a leadoff single and then a one out single to Cabrera and then got Solarte and Smith. Today he's trying to pitch around a leadoff double and follow up walk. And this time Cabrera laid off the breaking ball. One and two. 
He's threw 11 pitches in five at bats last night. Solarte on deck. One and two. Four straight breaking balls. All of them pretty good ones and Cabrera has been pretty good uh, with guys on base lately. He got a walk off base hit the other day before the uh, Padres came into town here. Seen four straight sliders. I think. Perkins has to go in with a fastball at some point in time. If he throws a fastball out over the plate, it looks like Cabrera is trying to trying to see the fastball and wait as, as long as he can so that he can handle the that slider. Generally speaking, that means you got to go inside on the guy because it, it, he, he's waiting long enough you can get in and break his batter or uh, strike him out inside. He's starting to catch up with the slider speed or trying to start to get. Comfortable with the slider speed, but might have to show him something else. Perkins summoned Fryer out to the mound to talk about it. One and two to Cabrera. Flair to right. Arcia with a sliding catch comes up firing, and Perkins catches the overthrow. The game is tied on a sacrifice fly, and it's four apiece. Sacrifice fly. Alonzo led off the inning with a double. And first miss save opportunity for Perkins in quite a while. Yeah, nice play by RC and the slider right in the middle of the plate. It wasn't the real good back foot slider that he had thrown him up until then. Arcia with a slide, slide, nice sliding catch, and then tries to airmail the throw all the way in. That's the uh, tying run. He had to do his best to try to throw it out. So hit down the left field line enough hook to push it foul. One strike to Salarte. 0 for 3 with a walk. Back to a mid 90s fastball and a swing and a miss. Perkins ahead, 0 oh and 2. Popped up into the seats. Solarte had a fly ball to center against Perkins last night. Perkins could take another one of those here in the ninth. Five and a foul straight back. Oh, and two. One and two. Popped up. Harmony across the line, inning over. But the Padres tie it up after a leadoff double. And the Twins go to the bottom of the ninth, even a four.
the ninth, the Twins will have their three, four, and five batters coming up. Somebody hoping to provide a walk-off hit. There's Kevin Quackenbush and his impressive numbers on the year. Well, batting average of 191. Look at the strikeout to walk ratio. 31 strikeouts in 33 and third innings, only 11 walks. That's what you want out of the bullpen. Will send up Kluth, Vargas, and Arcee. Been a good day at the plate for Trevor Kluth with three runs batted in. Well, he got a couple of hanging breaking balls and delivered on both a first inning, two run home run, and then later on hit a ring and double or a single in the left field to drive in a run, went to second on an error by the left fielder, but also made a really, really nice play. On that swing and spinning bunt. Very good at that barehanded play for the third baseman. Twins have had five walk off plate appearances, only three walk off hits. Walk off home run by Parmalee against the Red Sox a couple days later. Aaron Hicks with a walk off single. Up and away ball one. Then there was Santana's. Spinning number back to Joaquin Soria, the Rangers, and Soria fumbled it. The Twins won a game that day. And then uh, Dozier with an RBI single in the ninth against the White Sox, 2 0. Oh. And then it was time to hit one back to the pitcher again. Ploof hit one back to Matt Thornton. And Francisco Cervelli got the force at home, but then his throw went way up the right field line, and the Twins scored the winning run. On July 5th against the Yankees. 2 0. 2 1. Trevor got a good pitch hit to hit there, 2 0. Right in his wheelhouse, really. He fouled it off. On the outside corner, 2 and 2. Outfield playing just a little bit deeper, trying to eliminate the chance of a double. In the dirt, three and two with Vargas on deck. And the third baseman, Solarte, playing about five feet off the line. Not always a three and two count, but this should be, uh, or a fastball count three and two, but this should be a fastball, I would think. Trevor seen it, see if he can do something with it. Foul back. Beckenbush doesn't want to walk the uh, leadoff hitter. He's throwing all fastballs except for one breaking ball. The breaking ball bounced about 58 feet, so the chances are he's not going to. Throw anything but the pitch he's had success getting over here. Trevor needs to be looking for a fastball. And he wasted one out near the outside corner. And Bush ready another 3 2 to Ploof. That one up over the center of the plate and fouled it back. Another 3 2. Off the plate, a breaking pitch, and Trevor managed to take it for a leadoff walk. I don't know how he did it, but that was a great take right there. <laughs> a terrific take. Just the tenth unintentional walk issued by Quackenbush in more than 33 innings. Eduardo Nunez is going to run for Ploof. So geared up for fastball, at least I would have been right there, and it would have been hard not to. Not to swing at it. On the other hand, sometimes you take a pitch not because you saw it really well, just because 
gearing up for something else, and you, there's no way you could hit it. You just take it and pray for it to be called a ball, and that it was that time. Here is Vargas. Swing and a miss. Vargas with a broken bat infield hit in the fifth. He's also walked one for three. And here's where the Padre outfield really plays back in a no doubles defense here. The right fielder. Amarista is nearly on the warning track. Strike two. If he takes two steps back, he's on the dirt. Yeah, that's a severe no doubles defense right there. Of course, the game winning run in on first base and the person of a uh, very, very speedy Nunez. So. They have to cut the ball off on anything hitting the gaps or down the lines. Two strikes to Vargas. Struck him out on three. One down. And that'll bring up Arcia. There's something about Quackenbush's delivery that's sneaky. That's a 90 mile an hour fastball. I haven't seen one, I don't think, too much faster than that. I've seen 88, 89, 90, maybe 91, and he's throwing it by guys. Trevor Plouffe looking mm. fastball was only able to foul him off. There's something a little bit sneaky about his uh, delivery, I think, that makes that ball jump on the hitter a little bit more quickly than you think. Nunez goes, pitches outside. Nunez in with a stolen base. Fourth steal of the day for the Twins. And Nunez trying to flex that left shoulder a little bit. A stolen base. This time the catcher is Rivera. Yeah, on the on the slide there, head first. You see him coming in relatively late for a home for a head first slide. A little bit of a look like he jammed his uh, shoulder, upper chest muscle there up by the clavicle. Want to know? There'll be time for concern later. Right now, the Twins are only concerned about his legs. 2-0 to Arcia. Harmony on deck. Very high. 3-0. Bush has thrown 15 pitches. There hasn't been a ball put in play yet. Long plate appearance and a walk to Plouffe. Quick strikeout. Of Vargas, and now what will be called an intentional walk to Arcia. And a meeting on the mound. That's why, even when you look at someone's walks, and we make the uh, distinction between an intentional walk or an unintentional walk, sometimes that's not really fair either. This was uh, an intentional walk only because he couldn't throw a strike to Arcia earlier in the plate appearance. Right. Right. I almost, I almost think he'd go three and zero and walk and, and throw a ball for intentionally and ought not be called an intentional walk. Just for the reason you're saying. Plate umpire Marvin Hudson says, "Let's move things along here a little bit." And Parmley hit the first walk-off hit, a home run against the Red Sox back on May 13th. Game was tied at the time. He had a two-run home run.
Hoping for a hit here or just get it get it back to the pitcher and see what happens. That's worked out pretty well for the twins too. I'm gonna opt for the base hit. <laughs> Down the left field line, but foul. Marmalee hitless. He's gotten the ball out of the infield. A strikeout, a walk, a grounder to short. And then he did hit one back to the mound in the seventh. And Torres made a nice play starting a 1 6 3 double play. One strike to Parmalee. Quackenbush, 18 pitches, only half of them strikes, and that's why he's boxed himself in a corner here. One and one to Parmalee. Generally, the more pitches a hitter sees, the more comfortable he gets. Breaking balls. We're going to miss. Escobar on deck. One and two to Chris Parmalee. Foul back. Another 89, 90 mile an hour fastball that. Twins hitter is laid on, not catching up. Either the gun is a little messed up, or uh, this guy's got a sneaky delivery that, that gets that uh, 89, 90 mile an hour fastball on the hitter really quickly, more quickly than they expect. Very high with a fastball. He has a delivery a little bit, an arm. The reason why I think it's sneaky is because he has a, a, an arm delivery a little bit like Phil Hughes. It's kind of a smooth uh, move out of the stretch into his uh, into his delivery. His his arm stays behind his body a long time, then he kind of short arms it. Two and two to Parmalee. A flip shot towards short, fighting the sun is Cabrera. He makes the catch, two down. And that'll leave it up to Escobar. You can see the delivery right here. High leg kick. The, his arm stays behind his body a long time, and then he just kind of short arms a, a quick little flip. That was a breaking ball. You can see his, his hand, his fingers, and wrist come over the top of it. Good look at how you throw a breaking ball. But it just looks like that delivery, that real short arm. All at once, after having his arm hidden behind him for a long time, is, is uh, really deceiving to the hitters. Escobar with two hits, looking for a third, a game-winning hit. Make the ball be down. Breaking ball. Oh, that's a good ball one. strike. Escobar's two-out single in the fifth made it a three-to-one ball game. Escobar pretty good on low fastballs, not as good on the ball up above the belt. Until he gets two strikes, he really needs to concentrate on making the fastball be down in the zone. On the left field line, that's to be foul. Smith chasing it to no avail. Now Escobar in an 0-2 hole. Strikes to the twin shortstop. Another one poke foul into the seats. A little surprised at how shallow Venable is playing. Escobar, I understand the need to cut down any singles. This is 
the Padres would call, I guess, a no singles defense because a single can beat them. But boy, both the left fielder Smith and the center fielder Venable are playing very short. Well, it's almost like where you play if the winning run were on third base with less than yeah. two out. Where you you play where uh, a, a position from which you know you could you have the best chance of throwing out the runner at the plate. No reason to play any deeper because if you can't throw them out from any deeper, then no sense playing out there. To center, heading back is Venable, still going back, makes the catch. What a catch by Will Venable. He ran 100 feet to haul that ball down, and he sends us into extra innings. by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. Well, whether Escobar saw what we saw, he nearly burned the Padre outfield and delivered a game-winning hit. Tremendous catch out in center field. And so we'll go to the 10th inning with Anthony Swarzak pitching for the Twins. And a great at bat by that young man. He wasn't uh, necessarily trying to hit it over anybody's head. He was trying to square up a uh, pretty good and sneaky fastball and was able to do that with two strikes. Just couldn't quite get it over Amaris's head in center field. Just a terrific play. As we look at Anthony Swarzak here to pitch the 10th uh, inning. He'll face the three, four, and five batters. Seth Smith, Tommy. Medica and Jed Jerko. Eduardo Nunez still flexing that left shoulder. And he's in at third base. Outside, ball one. Smith with an RBI double in the sixth. He also walked in the eighth. Side two and oh. Foul tip two and one. In extra inning games, the Twins are four and four. Played four on the road, won two of them. Played the four at home, won two of them. Just missing the corner, and it's three and one. You see the nice movement on that fastball by Anthony Swarzak, 93 miles an hour. Is another conversation the pitching coach Rick Anderson has had with one of his charges. And along the same lines as he's had to talk with a lot of his pitchers. You try to throw the ball too hard and too perfectly. High fly, deep right field. And come on, a home run. Smith hitting his 12th of the year, and the Padres have their first lead of the afternoon. It's 
Orzak falling behind three and one had to come in with a strike and Smith was waiting for him. Seth Smith's a very very good left hand hitter against right handers and he got one that he was looking for. You get to three and one and the sink can't be as much sink and you can't throw it nearly for the corner as much as you want the ball gets in the middle without a whole lot of sink. And the next time it sinks is out there into that man's glove. Strike one to Medican. Couple of hits. Drove in a run with a ground ball in the sixth. Busted his bat. And a foul ball, two strikes. The Padres have been after the Twins all afternoon long. Started out two nothing, made it two to one, then it was three to one Twins. They tied it at three, four three, tied it up in the ninth. Now taking a lead in the tenth. Breaking ball off the plate. One and two. Smurzak like pretty good about not doing what he just did. That's just the third home run he's allowed all year in 55 and a third innings. Smith got him, and the Padres have a lead. Two and two. Bounce to the right side. Easy pick up for Dozier. And one down. Twins are due to send up Fryer, Schaefer, and Santana. Joaquin Benoit. Those are for the Padres after the trade of Houston Street. Jed Jerko, the batter. Ball one. Might be that Kurt Suzuki would hit for Fryer to start the inning. Another one in the dirt, two and zero. Oh. Big pop up near third base. Nunez is there now. And there's no play. Enough wind up there again to blow some balls that might have been in play back out of play. And also, I think held some balls up, uh, fly balls to left field that I thought went yeah. hit were going to go a little bit further. So I think there's a little bit more wind up there than. Uh, than the at least the uh, American flag at right field would have No, I was fooled on Santana's fly to left in the eighth inning. Right. Thought that ball had a more carry to it. Two and one. This one should be playable. Schaefer. Has to come in with the wind pushing it toward the infield. Two down. And now Will Venable who made that great catch going back on Escobar's drive playing a very shallow center field but after a long run had a wonderful catch to send this game into extra innings. Strike one. Venable hitless he struck out twice both times looking. And now two strikes. A 
this in its own way. Venable's catch is a testament to what a great job. Swing and a miss. And that ends the inning. The Browns crew did because the catch was made in the patched up area out in center field. Willingham and Colabello left, and at least two of those guys will get a chance to hit here. One would think in the tenth inning, Suzuki in the on deck circle already getting ready to lead off the bottom of the tenth against closer Joaquin Benoit. Benoit, we've seen a lot of places for a lot of a lot of appearances. Now the closer for the Padres in Houston Street went to the Angels. So far, doing a pretty good job, looks like. The fastball change up deluxe. And Suzuki will hit for fire. Let's give credit where credit is due. It was Alexi Amarista who made that catch to end the ninth inning. The center fielder Venables playing in right. So it was Amarista who sent the game into extra innings, and we'll see if the Twins can send uh, it into at least one more extra inning. Suzuki and then Schaefer in the on deck circle, but Willingham in the hole right now. And strike one to Suzuki. Suzuki just one for four as a pinch hitter. The just being the four, not the one, because he's been the starting catcher for so many games. Trying to get a board here to start the bottom of the tenth. One and one. I think manager Ron Gardenhire's thinking is that uh, Josh Willingham is uh, going to hit, depending on what Suzuki does. If Suzuki's on, I think Jordan Frazier's going to bunt. If Suzuki's not on, then I think it'll be Willingham. Play two and one. Twins have seen plenty of Benoit. They mm -hmm. should know what he's got. Has a little trouble sometimes with command. Doesn't uh, doesn't throw the ball over, and then other times that fastball and changeup will be very very good. Suzuki's 0 for seven against him over the years. Popped up. And behind the Twins dugout, out of play. He's pitched pretty well against the Twins. There's no, no question about it. But he has given it up in the past, so. See what the uh, 
guys can do. The rally caps are out. Up the middle and a pinch hit for Suzuki. It cost him a bat. He'll take the exchange and the leadoff man is on. And now we'll see if Schaefer can succeed in bunting something he's had a tough time doing today. Well a high fastball there. He didn't hit it well but since the ball was up in the zone he was able to muscle it through the infield. Wins with the tying run aboard. Schaefer tried to bunt in the second. The bunt hit him as he left the batter's box. He was ruled out. And then again in the eighth inning after Fryer's double, he tried to bunt twice, failed to do so, and then ended up grounding out, leaving Fryer at second. In the air, foul back to the screen. In three not very good attempts so far. One thing. That you have to do to be a good bunter is you, you really have to keep your, your uh, we used to call it, get, get your nose right on the ball. And, and you got to get your, your the bat head out in front. Now watch this. He puts the bat out, but his head's a long way from the bat and never see how it never gets close to the pitch and to the big end of the bat. It's hard to bunt that way if you're not if your nose and eyes aren't right over the barrel of the bat. No. What happens what happens when your head's a long ways away is that you end up having to jab at it. You, you can't just let the ball hit the bat which is the best way to bunt. Just try to catch the ball on the big end of the bat which will uh, at the very end of the bat will deaden, it deaden the ball but you, you got to get your nose out there over the plate. It's off the plate and it'll be a good bunt. And Schaefer advances Suzuki to second base. That was a good bunt. That was. That was well executed. He got a little bit lucky that ball was in on him a little bit more, so it was uh, a little bit easier for him to stay on the ball. So the, the ball came in just a little bit more, and it was able to come run back into run back into his bat. Looked like it hit the plate. Yep. Bounced like it hit something yep. uh, right around the plate. He still he still jabbed at it a little bit, but uh, but again. Give credit where credit's due. Got the guy over. That's the most important thing. And so now Santana looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 2. Been hit twice and walked once. Trying to get this game tied up. But Suzuki at second and one away. Nice block by Rivera. Scored since the sixth inning. If he throws him a low fastball right here, I'm betting on Danny. I think he'll go fastballs and change ups to uh, Santana here. The change up in the dirt, Danny might be a little vulnerable. He's aggressive, he likes to swing at it, but anything in the strike zone from the from the knees to mid thigh, either fastball or changeup. I think Dan's gonna have pretty swing. I pop up right field. Number two. He made a bad prognosticator out of me right there. <laughs> that was a pretty. That was that was Danny's pitch, and he just was a little quick on it. And that'll bring up Brian Dozier. This is the pitch that he's looking for. Uh, uh, fastball kind of right there, and he's just seeing it. those fast hands. He got he got just a little quick and got under and down toward the end a little bit. I think he was looking for a little bit more fastball than it actually showed up. Dozier singled in the first. It's then 0 for 4, and he's left a whole bunch of men on base. This will be a chance for him to pick up that first RBI.
Ball one. If Dozier keeps the game alive, Nunez would hit. Dozier. Three and zero. Oh. Last time Dozier faced Benoit, he hit a home run. And you can tell that's on uh, Benoit's mind. He's going two and zero oh slider there, slider one and zero oh slider, two and zero oh slider. To get to three and all, those might have the hits on here, and it might not be a fastball. And a four pitch yep. walk filling first base. Three and all slider. The first base open. And that'll bring up Nunez, who faced Benoit one time in his career. Nunez entered the game as a pinch runner after Plouffe walked to start the ninth inning. Swing and a foul, one strike. Nunez as a pinch hitter, one for seven. He's haven't done well off the bench. Suzuki's pinch hit single starting this tenth inning, just the eleventh pinch hit. Nunez, of course, entered the game as a pinch runner. This is his first at bat of the ball game. Checked his swing, but he went two strikes. Nunez with the twins down to their last strike. Out in front of the changeup. That hit out in front of the plate though constitute a swing. Oh and two to Eduardo Nunez. Chip shot center field. Caught by the shortstop Cabrera. And the Padres come back at the Twins and win in extra innings. Tom Hanneman a one run loss for the Twins today after a two run win yesterday. Dick it was bound to happen for the first time in nine years. The Padres beat the Twins. It took extra innings up next on Twins Live. We'll break it all down including the Twins dazzling defense. We'll hear from Gardy and we'll look ahead to the series in Oakland. 